What is good, everybody? What is good? Um, still waiting, still waiting on my guest to arrive. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> give him a few minutes to get in here. I uh, sent the link yesterday. Uh, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Here he is. He is here. He is in the house. Let me bring him upon the screen. Hello, Captain Crunch. How are you? How's it going? Good. Snap back on pop. All right, I want you guys to welcome my very, very, very special guest, Blackbird451, in the house. How are you doing today, sir? I am good. I like your studio. Oh, thank you. It's very this is, uh, yeah. It's just, this is really just a, just a, a divider that I use in my just home. A fold out. Yeah. Keep oh, the enemies and there away. it goes. Keep the enemies away. Keep the enemies away. So how was your weekend? Oh, uh, my weekend was pretty good. Good, good, yeah. good, good. We there have been lots of people looking forward to this uh, discussion, and um, I have been too. I've been quite excited about this, considering um, our sordid past. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> For people who are unaware of the dynamic that Mr. Blackbird and I have had, uh, our our um, interactions have been mostly limited to TikTok. And yes. if you know TikTok, it can be quite divisive on many fronts. And him and I have had our altercations on there, uh, everything from name calling to get out of my face. Um, but within the last month or so, we have come to a uh, ground where we can actually have discourse. And that has been kind of refreshing for me that there's been growth on, I think, both sides that we can get to this point. So. Right. I put forth to um, Mr. Bird the opportunity to have a discussion about science and religion and the existence of God and morality and all that good stuff. And so he has um, obliged us with having this discussion. Um, no, I have not had this guest before. Uh, this is a this is brand new. This is a groundbreaking opportunity for me to discuss something with once with a person that was once my Enemy, enemy. Um, so I, I'm trying to, uh, I want to get some ground rules and stuff set up before we begin. Absolutely. Um, my question, do you want to go first in your presentation or would you like me to go first? I prefer if you would went first since you're the, you're the guest. Um, right. So let's, uh, how about we set the ground rules first mm -hmm. and then we can go into opening statements. Okay, so let's do. Let's do. A, I, I I give people lots of time. I don't I don't care how long you take because I don't have a limit on my show. Sure. Um, and I don't care how long you take to say what you got to say. I really that's the longer you take, the better because that means you get to say your point. Right. Um. How about we say six minutes for opening, um, and uh, we'll get some. If there's anything in your statement that or my statement that you want to rebut or talk about, you can. And then I go into mine six minutes, and then we have the open ground discussion we sure. can take we can take guests as ne um questions from the audience as needed if we need to as well i'll, I'll give you the, the full screen to have your time as well so um okay. if you want to get going then feel free and uh i'll be quiet sure uh so today let's see we're going to be talking about uh science uh versus religion uh i just want to start off saying that i am not a scientist um, however, I uh, used to be uh, grounded pretty much in religion um, in my past life, <laughs> I would say. And uh, I stepped away from Christianity and religion altogether um, maybe, I don't know, 10 or so years ago uh, and have taken a more pragmatic approach to how I view the world. Uh, me and Marlo, uh, Marlon Marlo, um, have had our differences in the past. Primarily my areas of specialty that I speak about that I'm most knowledgeable on is uh, systemic racism, um, issues involving uh, societal things, uh, Black Lives Matter, stuff like that. I primarily talk about um, science in and of itself is not particularly my field, but I think that I can make an argument, uh, I can make an argument uh, for science uh, against religion on the existence of morality and where it comes from, from a philosophical standpoint. Um, and that's where I will be looking to make my argument from. Um, 
I think that this is going to be less of trying to prove or disprove the existence of God. I don't think that that could be done by no man uh, or woman on the planet. Um, so I don't think this debate will be necessarily about whether or not God exists or not, but more so about um, where does morality come from? Uh, if there is a God, uh, is morality grounded in God's existence? Uh, and if there's not, how do we ground the existence of morality uh, in science and in philosophy? So that's where I will be making my stance from. And I'm, I'm done, Marlon. I didn't need a full six minutes. All right. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Um, I'll, I'll, I don't have anything to add to that. I'll just go with, with mine. Um, so my, my take on this thing is, uh, I, I'm not out to prove God either because he's not asked me to do that. Um, he's just asked me to believe. And so there is no, uh, proof that is needed for me to bring scientifically to, but I can, um, secondly, the case of morality in this instance is one that cannot be based in man. And so I'll be going about this um, from a philosophical point of view as well um, to investigate on my end the origin and base for human morality in the world. Um, because from that, you can branch out to just about any human interaction, political interaction, and social interaction that you can think of if you have a basis for morality. Um, the world as we know it has been under a lot of contention as to its origin, um, as to how man interacts with everything, with each other, more so with each other. And we have become a nation and a world of answers based on nothing versus questions based on nothing. That makes any sense we don't ever ask anymore we just assume that we know and i want to take this opportunity to kind of make a case for asking more questions than anything else so i'm hoping that after this uh, discussion is over we'll have at least a more directed path for whichever side you pick whether that be the i don't believe in god and god-based morality or i don't believe in man or a man-based morality so we'll We'll have a, a pretty good discussion. I think it will end up branching off into just about every facet of life from then on. So um, that is that. So um, questions, do you have any for me? Because I have quite a few for, for you. Uh, I don't mind if you start. Um, so you had mentioned that you said that you had come from a religious background. Um, I don't necessarily care what background that is because religion in and of itself is not um what i follow i don't follow religion religion is more of a measuring stick for man to figure how much better man is than man uh, I, have a, I have a question for you about that actually i mm -hmm. uh, would hate to interrupt but i no, go often ahead. when i was uh, a christian myself i often heard that christianity is not uh, a religion mm -hmm. um and i would push back on that i believe that christianity is a religion it follows all of the uh secular rules involved in what a religion is but some people say that religion well things that were taught to me was that christianity is not a religion it is simply the emulation of christ or being mm -hmm. christ-like uh how do you feel about that yes it is a relationship as opposed to religion a religion follows a set of rules and the rules only and that's how you dictate your interaction with god um christianity does not base itself on the rules of the relationship it bases on the actual relationship. It's kind of like a marriage. Um, just because I have a piece of paper and that's the only reason I'm with my wife is because of that piece of paper. And as long as I stay within the confines of that piece of paper, I love my wife. That's not how the love goes in a marriage and that's not how you make a flourishing relationship with your wife. It's the exact same concept or even with your kids as just because I'm your parent doesn't mean that all I do is say, hey, or I feed you give a place to sleep and that's it. That's not the extent of my parenting. That's not how I show love to my kid. So with religion, you have a very set set of rules. It doesn't waver. And if you don't follow those rules, you're no longer in that relationship. That is not how Christianity functions. It functions based on the connection that you have with God and the maintenance of that relationship because of love. 
right. Okay. So I will, uh, I think I'll prefer for you to continue your points and I will rebut afterwards. I really don't want this to be a conversation where we're interrupting each other. Yeah, no problem. Um, I, I've grown is, very much tired of those debates. Yeah. So. Yeah. And this is, this, and like I said, my, my form, mm -hmm. my platform is a little bit different than most people. Okay. TikTok, I can't stand it because I have a lot of people that just parrot in and interrupt it in the chat. And, right. um, so what, what this is, is more so a, a free plan. And I don't have the risk of people going into TikTok and saying, report, report, and shut me down. Say, we don't have that problem here. Right. Um, so interrupt as, you know, politely as you can, but interrupt as, as you see fit if you sure. have questions. Um, okay. So you start off with uh, Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. Uh, you can continue from there, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, so my questions are, so you said you were a Christian. I was. Um, and it was about 10 years ago. Yes. Um, what was the first thing that happened that made you not just question, but question to the point of leaving it? Well, I wouldn't say there was a uh, first thing. It was many things over the course mm -hmm. of my life that, uh, brought me away from Christianity. Uh, <clears throat> uh, ever since I was a children, I often questioned the contradictions of the Bible and its teachings and God since I was very young. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I would say things like, oh, well, you know, uh, if Christ is the only way to get to heaven and only knowing him is the only way to get to heaven, then what about uh, people who were born, uh, you know, in places where there is no Christianity, where they don't mm -hmm. learn about God? What happens to them? Do they go to hell? Um, what about dogs? Do dogs have a soul? You know, are they aware? Do they go to heaven or hell? Right. Because, you know, I always cared about animals. So that was kind of more of an immature thought that I used to have. Um, I asked about things. Uh, related to uh, if God is all powerful and all knowing and he has a plan for us and why does he allow us to suffer? There's a lot of questions like that that I built up over the course of my life that would be answered with other things that I accepted that I realized later were still contradictory. It wasn't one major event. Um, and if it was, uh, it would actually be something that was somewhat trivial. Mm -hmm. uh, that I was having an incident where I really needed to get home. I had an emergency. I had to get home and there was a... Uh, people outside uh preaching and they stopped me to talk to me and asked me if i wanted to talk about god and i was like no i really need to get home i have an emergency and they were like oh well you know like come up come up and you know we'll pray for your emergency and i'm like is it gonna prevent my emergency from happening like i really need to get home like right now um uh because i initially with my family and it's like oh god will take care of it if you just come up and pray and i'm like i i really need to get home and they were like oh um you don't know god you don't believe in god um uh, and I'm like, okay, this is bullshit. Uh, and I've seen that very often, the very condescending nature of Christians and Christianity, uh, whatever set they fall under, whether it's Protestant or uh, whatever it may be. Um, and that particular event in and of itself didn't really necessarily push me away from religion, but it kind of really like opened up my eyes to how people uh, either praise or blame well, not, not blame God, but they assign praise to God in any instance, whether it's negative or positive. Something good happens to you. Oh, it's the will of God. Something bad happens to you. Oh, well, it's the will of God. Um, and I re I got so tired of this and hearing it all the time, um, even from my own family or within the church that uh, I started looking into things more. And it wasn't like that. That wasn't the exact moment I said, well, I'm no longer Christian because I still like held on to my faith for many years after that. Um, but it was it was starting to wane. I used to pray to God every single night. Um, and eventually I found that whatever was going to happen was going to happen, whether or not it was through the will of God or I decided to see the signs or uh, open up my eyes and allow him to speak to me. I think that it's all at the end of the day confirmation bias. Um, you're going to see signs where you look for them. And this is something that I started looking into and I figured out. So I moved away from Christianity and I started looking life, started looking at life from um uh, less through the lens of religion. So it wasn't one major thing in general. It was a lot of things over the course of most of my two thirds of my life. So you, you can't say for sure you've ever had a one on one experience with a God. I don't think anybody has. But, but we're not talking about anybody else. I'm just asking for for you specifically, you have not experienced any one on one experience with God. Um. What would you describe as a one-on-one -on -one experience? I, I, no, that would be your that would be your description of what you think. That's why I'm asking. If from your definition of what God was at the time, mm -hmm. do you remember anything of a one-on-one -on -one experience with Him? 
uh, any single event that I could really call was a one-on-one -on -one experience with God. I don't, I don't know how anybody would classify that. That's the thing. That would simply just be based on my opinion of somebody's. Yeah, that's why I'm asking bias, you, not anybody else. Right? Yeah, like, exactly. did God speak to me? Did He show me a particular mm -hmm. sign? Did I ask for something to happen and it did? Um, how would uh, I would like to know how you would describe? A one on one instance with God, because I think that anybody can find evidence for themselves if they look hard enough that they did. Um, and I don't want to make that claim because I would say that no, I never had a one on one experience with God. Okay. But when I was a Christian, did I see signs of God? Oh, absolutely. Yes. So, so then you that's the answer to, to my question. Um, in your opinion, you cannot say definitively that you have or have not. I can say definitively, definitively that, that I have not. not. Yes. Okay, okay good. And that's that. Okay, that answers the question. When when we start branching out into well, I don't think anybody has. It's it's not. I can literally tell you that I have, and even if I told you that, you'd say, well, that may not have been. But it's still my personal experience with it. So that's right. why I said you can't say no one else has because I said that not, I don't think nobody everybody. else has because I don't believe that God exists. I think it's all confirmation bias. Right. So I'm not I'm not attacking anybody or speaking for anybody. I'm simply saying that uh, because I don't like you can't expect me to come in here and say that I don't believe God exists. And then to say that I uh, think that you've had an experience with God, that would be me being intellectually dishonest. Well, unless you said they had an experience with their idea of God. No, with God, not their idea of God. Well, but if you don't, if there is no God, then it, it has to be their idea. No, I would, make, real, I, would, right? I would make the claim that nobody has had an experience with God because I do not believe God exists. Right. So if they have had an experience, it would be their idea of God, not real God. Yes, what they believe to That's be. That's right. What That's what I'm saying. God. So they okay, had an yeah, interaction yeah. with their I idea believe. of God. Right. Yes. Right. Their subjective idea of God. Right. Yes. Okay. And that, so I, I get that. So um, objectively subjective to them. Yeah, either way. Right. Right. Now, we had had a discussion on TikTok about the v validity of science and the creation of man or the, the advent of man um, and the branching out of the human race versus the animal race and the introduction of morality into the structure of mankind. Um, the question I didn't get to ask at the time was, and I think, well, I kind of hit on it a little bit, but I didn't get time for you to expound on it, was um, if we are all from the same location in terms of the organism that started all of this um would that make eventually everyone incestuous um i guess it would how closely somebody's dna would be would be uh, to define incest i think we define incest as direct relatives we know that we have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth relatives, right? If somebody's like a thousand, one thousandth removed from me, no, I wouldn't count it as incest. But first or second removed from me, yes, absolutely. Um, does that depend on the degeneration of the DNA structure in terms of over time, how pure the DNA is from the time of creation or the time of the advent of man to now? Would that make a difference? How like diluted the DNA is? Right. Yes, absolutely. And that would depend on how far or how close you can have relationships with somebody versus not. Well, incest is necessarily a uh, societal and moral thing, right? We think that it's immoral to sleep with our family members. But, you know, thousands of years ago when there was a lot less of us and people didn't have much of a choice but to do so, they did. Okay, good. So, I just want to verify that that particular point would be off the table when it comes to the morality based on a God base or a man base because that would be dependent on the population and the necessity at the time. Um, right. I mean, if we all got reduced to like the last three people on earth and they happen to be family members, like would it be immoral for them to try to continue the human species by reproducing? Uh, probably. I don't think anybody would get mad at them for that. Uh, there'll be only three. They can only be the ones that get mad. So no one would care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would would it really matter at that point. So. I want to tackle this whole thing from this, and I only have two more questions, then you can ask me if you have any. Um, well, I don't only have two more, but for now, I only have two more. Um, the idea that morality is based on mankind's ability to decide it, as opposed to a God creating man and giving them the sense of morality, where in those two do you find the most ground for 
saying that man has created his own, his own morality because I'm trying to decide how is it that if man created his own morality that it it even harnessed itself to this one particular idea that right and wrong was the two things that came out of it. Right. So uh, just to be clear, or do you believe that uh, without the existence of a God in which we ground the, the existence of morality, because God gives us that grounding for morality, that um, there is no morality without God? Right. Or right. Okay. Um, so uh, my, my point to that is that I, I believe that existence, uh, the existence of morality is something that is natural, uh, inherent with all beings, um, and can change based on the times uh, that society lives in, right? Obviously, the morality that we have today is much different than the morality that we had uh, in the past at some points. Um, would I say that morality is overall objective? Uh, in a sense, yes. Uh, do I believe that individuals have the objective, subjective belief of their own morality? Absolutely. Um, but I think that when you think of morality as a whole, right, not within a vacuum, but where do we ground morality, right? Um, I think that we ground morality in uh, our natural development as uh, homo sapien, as persons, uh, and combined with our ability to be conscious, uh, with our ability to be um, self-aware and uh, with our emotions that humans have, which is something that other beings do have, but not combined with our level of self-awareness, um, that we get morality from uh, primarily one word, and that is reciprocity. Uh, for anybody who may not know what reciprocity is, uh, not, I know not everybody knows, but it essentially means that um, you wouldn't want stuff done to you or you wouldn't want to do to others as you wouldn't want them to do to you, right? Or you would want to care for others as you would want them to care for you, right? The golden rule is what we call this, the golden rule of reciprocity. Uh, I believe that we inherently understand that we do not want to be harmed, that we don't want harm to come to us, that we want to have fulfillment and live our best lives. And as a result of that, we understand things like reciprocity, empathy, and sympathy, uh, for the suffering of others uh, are the people within society who lack this or the knowledge of it or uh, to be aware of it or not taught it absolutely but I believe that uh, inherently we all have this feeling we know when we do something wrong to somebody that it's wrong um, even if we try to justify it with uh, other things such as you just think of like bullies right um, I, they justify their wrong behavior with their idea that might is right um, and not uh, uh, but I believe that deep down they do understand reciprocity. A lot of people who get older tend to understand this as well. Um, but it's something that we learn. But I think it's something that, um, I mean, you can learn to be better at it, but I think it's something that we all inherently have. So as a species, as we're evolving and uh, developing and producing or reproducing, we understood that we couldn't just go around killing everybody because, well, there would be none of us left if we did, um, or stealing or uh, assaulting and whatnot. So I think that's where our morality comes from, not from the existence of uh, a God or that it's grounded in the existence of God. So how do you accommodate or account for the idea of survival of the fittest or do you even believe in that concept? Um, I think that we do survival of the fittest every single day, right? Mm -hmm. uh, humans are the fittest, I guess you can call that. We're the smartest. Um, we're at the top of the food chain. We kill animals all the time for our own dietary needs. Um, we hunt, right, um, even when it's not even necessary. Uh, there are some people out there who still hunt for their own food. Um, people in the Midwest in particular or in more rural areas may hunt for food um, as opposed to like going out and shopping or whatever. But outside from that, people just do hunt for sport. So, I mean, we we, we are literally living the survival of the fitness every single day um, just by the uh, based on the merit of who we are as human beings. So yes, I do believe that survival of the fittest is a thing and that all of us are uh, essentially participating in this survival of the fittest at all times. So um, so it, I find it I find it interesting that you went straight from for, 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 to survival of the fittest as a relationship to man and animal, but not to man and man. Why, why was that? Why was that the, the link that you made for survival of the fittest? Are we not also in a battle with each other for survival of the fittest? So when we talk about survival of the fittest, often we think about uh, the uh, interconnection 
of survivability from one animal species to another, right? When we talk about survival of the fittest, we could talk about this in the case of like lions, for example, uh, right? Lions are of the same species and often you will see that uh, a male uh, lion will uh, kill other male cubs in order for them to uh, kind of remain in the position of power that the lion is, as being the head of the pride, um, so that no other younger lion grows up to be able to take the current lion's place as head of the pride. That is survival of the fittest, right? Obviously, the cub can't defeat a lion in a fight, so the lion is going to kill the cub. That's a, an example of like interspecies survival of the fittest. Uh, when we see this uh, in the case of other animals, such as it doesn't matter if it's a bird and a caterpillar, right, um, or uh, a, a hawk and a rat or a cheetah and a gazelle, um, whoever's fastest is going to be the one who survives. <clears throat> in the case of humans, um, I don't think that we walk around with this survival of the fittest mentality at all times, at least not on a very primitive level where we feel like, oh, if I'm stronger than you, then I can kill you. But there are people who do this. You see this in things like bullying. Right? Bullying is very prevalent as, as in a, an instinctual, inherent example of survival of the fittest, so that might makes right. Um, you see this in economy, right? Whoever has the most money or the most control has the most power over people who don't, right? Um, we just have survival. We still have survival of the fittest, but it's more so in, um, in ways that are societal, right? As opposed to us just walking around and killing each other. Now, are the people kill? Obviously. Right. Um, but I don't think they're doing it out of like some innate, like, I just want to be stronger than the next person. Although uh, I don't want to get into the psychological aspect of why people do negative things or psychopaths and how they kind of get a rush out of the amount of power and control that they have over people. Uh, but when we look at this purely from a society, societal standpoint, human versus human. Yes. Again, we do this every day. And we have lots of people, particularly in this particular case, conservatives who make these arguments all the time. Like, oh, if you're poor, then that's your fault right? You are not the fittest in this case economically, right? You uh, are just not doing what you're supposed to to be able to survive regardless of whether or not your what your economic status you were born into, into poverty. You didn't work hard enough so you deserve to starve or you don't deserve to have health care. And I often see this, Marlon, from your side, this idea of survival of the fittest, not from my side who believes that we should all have equity, um, things like universal health care, uh, and universal uh, or free education, right? Um, at least the, co the, the collegiate level. Um, I often see from the side of conservatives or paleo conservatives that this idea of survival of the fittest is very prevalent socially and economically. So, yes. Um, I don't know about the deserve to die part, but I have been told that I deserve to die if I don't get vaccinated. And that's from your side. So, let's. Refrain from the deserve to think, deserve, deserve, because that's, that's not for, at least for me, I have never told anybody you deserve to get what you get if you don't do something. I said from your side in particular. Yep, right. And right. I'm saying from your side, I've been told I deserve to die or not deserve any health care because I've not been vaccinated. So well, as we is, say, let's go Darwin, it's on, right? <laughs> it's, on, it's on both sides, right? right. It, it has to right. be both sides, not just, not right. just one. Um, right. So... The only thing I've actually said that you deserve what you get is if you indulge in a certain type of lifestyle where the interactive means will lead to a very horrific end. Um, that could be anything from drug use to gang affiliation. Sure. The same thing that goes for war. If you, if you're a soldier, death happens. Um, so, but the idea of deserving is a is a subjective thing um so that that was a the end of my first phase of questions if you have anything based on what we were discussing there let me let me know and then can answer those right so i am curious as to where <clears throat> you will be making your stance from uh because i've i've, I've explained uh, very often my position of where mm -hmm. i believe morality comes from um, where I believe it stems from. And uh, in our last conversation, mostly what I got was questions from you and kind of me just defending that point against your questions. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a, uh, a grounding or a, um, a maxim to stand on in regards to where you believe morality comes from and how you can substantiate that claim uh, with the existence of God? Yes. Um, so... When it comes to morality, the basis of it that I pick it has to be something that cannot 
just because I feel like it should change. Man's viewpoint of morality fluctuates just based on a whim, sometimes based on a feeling. And I don't think I can ground myself on anything that isn't itself grounded. If your morality changes every time your feeling changes, it is not a grounded thing. It is you carrying it wherever you feel like going, which makes it very undependable. It's no different than trying to anchor your boat to something that always moves. Your boat ain't going to ever be the same place you left it the last time, and then nothing is safe. When I base my viewpoint of morality coming from the idea of God, who does not change, it is external, outside of me. I cannot switch that morality up. I cannot make it change to what I feel. It is what it is. I have a more solid base to go from, as opposed to someone who has a morality base that is always fluctuating. When God says don't murder, it's set in stone. Whether or not the law tells me or the government tells me don't kill, they can always switch it up and say, well, you can kill in this instance and you can kill in that instance and blah, blah, blah. But when it's God saying don't kill, it's don't kill. When God says something set in stone, love thy neighbor as thyself, it's set in stone. It's not based on my morality and it's built into me, not because I put it there, but because he put it there. The same way no one can explain how morality even came about other than, oh, it developed. I don't see any difference between telling me it developed as opposed to God putting it there. So unless you can actually show me the point at which man developed morality, I have to believe that it just developed or you had it all along. And if you had it all along, how? And if it just developed, how? I have to be, I based mine on the creator of who I am, which is God, the same way I see a phone getting built by somebody. There are certain traits innate to the phone that did not just get there. They were built into the phone. And since the phone does what it's supposed to do because it was built to do that. The same way man was built to do something, built to express the exact nature of God in his morality, you see it embodied. Okay. So the grounding of morality comes from, you see God as like an anchor, right? And mm -hmm. without that, we would all just be boats in the water. No, 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 no. God isn't the anchor. God is what the anchor is holding on to. Right. Okay. Right. So God is the anchor that, of what it's holding on to, and that grounds us in a morality. Otherwise, we would all just be boats in the water floating off and whatever because that can fluctuate right it can change with the tide as you as i would imagine the analogy would would go into um so uh th this inherent grounding of god and his moral principles mm -hmm. i find that god in and of itself is very inconsistent in the bible okay. um at, at times he condones or even participates in the slaughtering of thousands of people but then tells others that they should not kill. Um, he is uh, an active participant uh, and, and encourages the violation of women and children and slaves. Um, but then he says that those things are wrong. Uh, he then has a bunch of other rules that to me don't make any sense. Things like not eating shellfish, for example. I've heard arguments that from Christians in particular that we should reject the Old Testament because Jesus came and essentially said those teachings were wrong. But if those teachings were from God and he is the son of God, then isn't God just contradicting himself? Uh, where do we ground the morality of which on which God exists if even God himself is not morally consistent? Well, what you're equating to morality is theology and you can't you can't mix the two. Okay. What do you what, mean? What, what, you're mixing theology with morality. No, these are things that happen in the Bible. Yes, but what you're mixing is theology with morality. Okay, if so mor what's your argument if, against I'll, that? I'll get to that. Sure. So when God says to do something, because he's the arbiter of all of it, it's done. When he doesn't, it's not done. He has set rules no different than anybody. If I tell you, like, I'm your parent, and you're three years old, and I tell you, you cannot do something. But then you see me doing something that I told you not to do, like say, touch the stove. But then I tell you, don't touch the stove. That's not a contradiction in morality, nor is it me trying to be different than you. I am doing something that I can do that you cannot do. If at age 16, it is still my stove. I tell you, you can touch the stove at a certain time. You decide to go touch the stove at a different time. I can then punish you for doing something outside of my rules. Because they're my rules, not the kids rules. 
it is no different than with God. But you have to believe on the conscience that God is who he is for any of that to make sense to you. If, however, that doesn't make sense, it's because of the belief system you have of who God is. If God really is the be-all and end-all, my place is not to question his rules. It's to abide by them. It is no different than a kid. What you get when a kid rebels is what you call the questioning of most rules. Yes, there are some things that are abusive in parental rules. That has never been the case in God's rules. You cannot name me one abusive rule that God has put down. I'm telling you right now, you can't place one ab abusive rule anywhere in God's word. Not one. And if you can, I would press you to show me. Uh, numbers 21, I believe, or Numbers 20, 21. Uh, the sterilization of women, if they're not faithful to their husband, I would say is an abusive rule. Did, did God put that rule in place? Absolutely. It's in it's in numbers. No, numbers, well, no, no, Deuteronomy, no, 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 and Leviticus no, 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 are. No, I, the, the question is, did God put that rule in so place? Our, so when we talk about the rules that God, God has put in mm -hmm. place, right? These were the, the people who essentially uh, spoke or got their rules from God, right? The Israelites in the, the books of Moses. Where does, what are the rules of Leviticus and Deuteronomy first and second law, as well as the rules and numbers come from? Are, are those the rule of God or are those the rule of man or yeah. are they the rules of God? I'm not talking about the Ten Commandments in particular, mm -hmm. but a lot of the rules that are listed within, if you've read, you've read the entire Bible, I assume. Yes, yes. Right, the the the, the rules that are listed in, because, uh, you know, Deuteronomy and Leviticus is just full of, like, laws. Do we uh, do we denounce the laws or do we count them as the laws of God because they're in the Bible and the Bible is the truth of God? Or do we say that they're the laws of man and not that they were laws through which the Israelites were given by God. You will find quite a few places in the Bible throughout old and new where man has taken upon himself to implement things that were not of God and they eventually paid the cost for that. Um, take for instance of people going out to um, act on something that God never said to act on and the very next thing, like I'll, I'll give you Saul, uh, King Saul as for an, for an example. God was going to put him in place a king. They didn't want God to assign a king. They wanted their own king. In that case, God said, fine, you know what? Do what you want. If you want a king, you do what you want and pay the consequences for it. And he let them have their king. That king was a very bad king. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. Eventually, God eventually rectified things. But the thing is, God will let you, this whole free will idea, he will let you do a bunch of crazy stuff in lieu of you dis of you obeying because you have that choice to disobey right however the consequence of your disobedience is not absolved you still get to pay the consequence but in that case you've chosen the consequence because he doesn't not lay down the consequence so for you to equate that oh he uh, allowed the mutilation of women which he never commanded which him for him to allow that does not mean that the consequence for doing something didn't come back on these people because it did israel went through all kinds of hell for their rebellion against god Israel had anything but an easy time in the Bible because of how much they rebelled against God. They have constantly been given choices after choices to obey, to obey, to obey. And at every turn, one of the most rebellious people in the Bible has been the Israelites. If you look at Abraham, he did his fair share of rebellion. Jacob did his fair share of rebellion. Uh, David did his fair share of rebellion. Every last one of them. Especially David. But the, but the one thing that didn't change was the fact that they rebelled against something that they were given specific rules to do. When they weren't given specific rules, they made up their own, which is like today's today's time. So I cannot give you that God commanded these things, which he did not, and equate when man picks something to do, that God was okay with it. Him allowing something to happen versus him being okay with it are completely different things. My 16-year-old has done a lot of dumb stuff. Completely. A lot of dumb stuff. I allow him to do it because at some point, life has to teach him a lesson. My rules are still set in stone. Don't do this in my house. Don't do this in my house. Don't do this. Don't do this because you represent me. His free will will cause him to disobey my rules. I can either put my punishment on him or the consequence of his actions outside of my will will pay the consequences for himself. I don't have to do a whole lot. It is no different than with God. So seeing something happen with God's people and saying, oh, yeah, 
See, God allowed that. God didn't allow, well, God okayed that. He didn't okay it. He allowed it. There's a massive difference between allowing something and being okay with it. And throughout history, throughout the Bible, there have been a lot of things allowed that were not sanctioned or commanded by God. So, <clears throat> um, let's see here. So, what was the word you used that God has never put forth a law that was what? What do you mean? You said that uh, there's never been evidence that God put forth a law that was used like a derogatory term for what God has never done. Uh, bad or something that was. Um, and then I wait, wait, right after I brought up the the law about sterilizing women who cheat on their husbands or who are not faithful to the husbands. What was the exact word? Well, you if, what, what, what's, it, what's the concept behind it, though? Well, the what concept behind that is that you then said that those were the laws of man. Mm -hmm. um right and i'm looking at numbers here numbers 20 in which i believe this law fall over uh right uh these are and it says and the lord spoke uh, unto moses mm -hmm. right so this these are the lord's words and every okay go law, ahead go ahead and read it read yeah, it absolutely read it. so i'm just looking at a couple of them here for example mm -hmm. like um um if he commits adultery you'll be put to death mm -hmm. for committing adultery um mm -hmm. Uh, if you curse your father or mother, you shall be put to death. Mm -hmm. um, some of these, uh, let's see. Uh, if a man lies with his daughter, both should be put to death. I'm not really totally, I don't, I don't know if somebody should die for that, but you definitely shouldn't be doing that. Um, again, I'm not saying that all of these are bad, but for example, uh, cursing your mother or father, being put to death, committing adultery, being put to death. Um, uh, da, 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 da. If a man lies with a woman having her sickness, so she has a period. She gets uh, put out. Shall, in, um, out of yeah, town. exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, kicked out, right? Of the of the yeah. For a time, them. yes. Right. Um, she has uncovered her fountain of blood, and both of them shall be cut off from their people. It doesn't mm -hmm. say for a time, it just says cut off from the people. Mm -hmm. Um uh can't look at your mother naked. I believe there was a case where this happened, and like a young boy was like killed by God himself, um, or made blind. I don't remember. It's been a while since I read the story. I'm pretty sure he was struck down and killed immediately by the God for accidentally looking at his mother's naked body. I, well, if you don't um, know for sure, don't quote yeah. it. Um, just, um, just some advice. If you don't know for sure that's what happened, then don't say that's what happened because pretty sure that is what happened though i remember the story being like a thing in my in my uh my mother so, used to be very adamant about like not sure. on her door because okay. things might happen and yeah. god might kill me if i did so um i can see why you stopped following christianity though. <laughs> <laughs> um well she didn't say that god would kill me she just told me the consequence of the story and i would ask this again this this wouldn't my mother wasn't like a devout like uh my mother is not the one who turned me away from Christianity whatsoever. My, my mother was not like one of those parents. Um, but she did tell me the story and the consequence of what happened. And again, mm -hmm. this would lead me to questions like, well, how come God doesn't do that anymore? If the sin is still equal today, then why doesn't God still kill somebody for viewing their mother's uh, nakedness? Right. Um, which, of course, I would get no actual answer to. No, you get you um, get a sure answer. Don't don't assume that you won't um, get an answer if you're going to ask the question. Ask the question. Trust me, I'm ready to give you a complete and full 100% answer. Okay. There is an answer to all of that. All okay. of it. We'll, 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 we'll get into that. We'll yeah. just noted that here. Um, lie, you shall have dirt and clean, beast and unclean. Yeah, great. But yes, yeah, so some of these some of these are actually are the word of God, right? So it's not just his divine Ten Commandments that are the word of God. There are lots of it. I'm pretty sure I could find more. Again, I haven't read the Bible in a mm -hmm. while. I told you it's been about 10 years, but I did. I've read the entire Bible. Um, it's been a while since I did, though. So I may not remember everything off the top of my head. But some of those laws, right? If you commit adultery, you think people should be put to death. Um, you don't think that that's a very uh, negative law for God to put forth? Uh, do you think that these laws should be followed today? Um, or uh, if they're not being followed today, why not? They're not asked to be followed today. Because? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Uh, yes. yes, the great arbiter of... Uh, um the new testament uh, against the old testament so no 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 okay see now that's what we're not going to do if what? you don't believe it anymore that's one mm -hmm. thing but to push aside it because someone else does i haven't done that to science and i'm not going to do that to you no i'm but saying that in this case he is not he, no he's not he is not he is not in this case again you have to look at things the way god made things not the way man wants to see things so, the Old Testament and prior to Jesus, everything was law. Everything had a natural consequence straight off the top for a breaking of the law because that was the only way to ensure the survival of the rule of law with God. When Jesus came, 
because of the fall of man, he was a second Adam. And again, all of this, you have to go back to believing certain things. And if you don't, none of it's going to really make sense to you. When Adam sinned, all fell under that rule. Right. Plain and simple. So you had laws now implemented to create a balance between right and wrong. Jesus came and there was such a thing now as universal forgiveness. The law was put to death and Jesus was now the only real arbiter between God and man of right and wrong and passage from sin to life. You believe in Jesus and you follow your way to God. You have now passed from a law based to a forgiveness based and God looking at you through the eyes of Jesus, not at you, but at his son. Hence why the covering of the blood, bam, bam, bam. But if none of those things are believed, you won't ever, 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 ever make it make sense. The Old Testament was all rule-based, law-based. There was nothing you can do outside of sacrifice to atone for everything. And the reason he put sacrifices in the way was to have a precursor for what Jesus was going to be. Jesus was the be-all and end-all of the sacrifice because he was a perfect man living a perfect life on earth as man in flesh. Once that was done, because the only atonement for the sin that happened with Adam was for a perfect to be put to death on behalf of the same way you do with a ram, a goat, or a bull. Once Jesus took the place as the permanent sacrifice, we now have a passage from where we were into God, and now we have the forgiveness of sins. So when you tell me, oh, this man has committed a sin, it is no longer man to man, it is man dealing with Jesus, dealing with God. You have now an avenue for that forgiveness. He has put all sin to death. All of it. Anything you can possibly do has now been brought to the cross, put to death in the ground, no longer part of who you are once you go through the avenues of Jesus, which is why he is the, indeed the bridge between the Old and the New Testament. He is the fulfillment of what we call law. The law was the Old Testament. Are those stories irrelevant? Absolutely not, because they show what life was like with law. The New Testament shows exactly what life is like under grace and Jesus. It is not different. They're not separated. You can't forget one and not accept the other or only accept one and not the other. They're both, both happen together and simultaneously because at the time of Jesus, death, he created that bridge from law to life. But in order to understand that, you have to believe the prior of who God was. He is still the same. He has not changed. The only reason he is not continuing the law-based stuff is because of Jesus. That was his decision to do. The only way that he could atone for the mistakes we made was that. There was no other avenue to do that. None. So, a couple things about that. Let's let's mm -hmm. kind of walk through this. So, the reason why we don't have sacrifice and stuff anymore as atonement for our sin mm -hmm. um is because jesus was the ultimate sacrifice right. right um so are we still born sinners uh after jesus sacrifice or yes, because not? you have to accept him right so we're born sinners until we accept jesus mm -hmm. right and then uh after that if we make mistakes what do we do to atone for that we don't have to because jesus did it for us correct w what do you mean mistakes if i sin well, that's a, that's a big difference between mistake and a, and a sin. Well, okay. you're, you're asking very big difference of words here. I mean, a mistake is, oh, I knocked the glass off the table. A sin is, oh, I knocked a man off a cliff. I mean, it's it's quite a quite a difference in a, in words. So I, I want to okay. make sure when you say mistake, what do you right. mean? So if I deliberately sin, mm -hmm. now what do I do? I've 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 accepted Jesus into my life. I deliberately mm -hmm. I deliberately sin. Is there anything that God asks of me? At yeah, point? confessing it to Him confession so now it's confession of your sin to who what do you mean i'm asking you confession. yeah to who that's the biggest thing it's not to any man it's to uh, god confess so confess to god so in the privacy of your home to a pastor you just confess no no not to fat to confess i said to god not to a pastor to, god. to okay. god yeah so confess your sin to god uh and do you think that all sin is equal it's sin is sin no, okay. but you might so equal that they, they don't have all equal outcomes and they don't have equal consequence in the real world but sin before God is sin before God. I, right. So to God, lying and murder is the same. Well, yeah, because it's if both of it is transgression against the holy God. I don't I don't know what you mean. I'm asking it, I, know, I know you're applying a human questions. aspect, but you're, yeah. you're applying a human question. Well, weren't we made in God's God. image? Weren't, weren't we made in God's image? Well, of course I, we were made in God's image. And we, we defiled that image by doing what we did. So again, what okay. what's what do you um, mean? 
So we were made in God's image, but now we no longer represent how we would have existed as God. I don't understand. If if Adam and Eve were made in God's image, then how was they how were they able to be deceived? Is it was still like, it was still free will, wasn't it? So God gave them free will. So then they, they always had it, yes. Okay. So always. He gave them exact rules what to do. Don't touch that tree. Right. And they they, they touched the tree. But if God is if God is infallible and he's God perfect, is infallible, man isn't. Right. But so how were we made in his image? What do you mean how you're made in his image? God is God is supposed to be perfect. If God made us in his image, why wouldn't he just make us like him perfect? What what exactly do you think in his image meant? Mm, I think that this is just a dog whistle to say that we're made in God's God's image that we feel love. Kind of like this grounding for morality, right? We we feel love because God is loving. Uh we feel uh 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 respect for others because God, I don't know, has respect. We feel anger because God has righteous anger. Or the, the emotions that we have is grounded in the Holy Spirit, right? And and uh, what we understand is like this this feeling of, of God um, that in his image we're made in that way so that we have the qualities of what God has, that he's righteous, um, right? That he's loving, uh, that he's caring, that he's kind, and we mm -hmm. are made in his image in that way, which again, I, I think is just a dog whistle um, to kind of give ground a God, uh, uh, give God a grounding in humanity and not give humanity a grounding in God. So, okay, so you didn't answer the question of what does it mean to be in his image? Do you have kids? I have, yes, I have one. Is he in your image? She very much looks like me, yes. Uh, does she behave exactly like you? Not at all. Does she screw up in a different way than you? Mm, yes. But she's in your image? But she looks like me physically. That's but she's in your image thing. because she has your traits, right? So God looks like us? No, hold on. She has your traits, right? Yes. Okay. When he says in his image, in his image, we are taking it as saying, oh, we should be exactly like God. We are not exactly like God. We have been made to want and fo want to foster a relationship. And that fostering of the relationship is with God. What man eventually did was try to find a way to not foster that relationship. When I give you, if I have a kid, take for instance, my kid comes to me and people say, man, that kid looks just like you. I said, yeah, but he doesn't act anything like me. And they're like, well, how do you know it's your kid? Well, outside of him looking like me, I can have a DNA test done and I can tell you that one way. That's a man way of doing it. Or I can tell you that when he sits down, he crosses his legs in a certain pattern that only I did when I was his age. Okay, that's one way to tell that he's mine and he's that he's kinda kinda like in your image. What what else? He can decipher between listening and not listening. That, that's also a trait, yeah, okay. But everyone else does that. Okay. What else does he do that you can tell that he's made in your image? He's in my care. What does that mean? He's within my image. But that doesn't make any sense, Marlon. What are you talking about? I am in God's image. I have been put made he breathed life into me the instant he put life into me i am now part of who he is his image is into me if you come for you familiar with computers you know what an iso is yes I know what an ISO okay is. perfect but that's exactly what it is we are a burnt image his image is burnt into us and you ever wonder why people can't be satisfied can't be happy with certain things the problem is that we have denied that image that he has put in us when adam and eve were in the garden, he could hear God talk, he could hear God's voice move in the garden. He was given a set of rules. He was given the free will. He said, don't touch that tree. If you touch it, you will surely die. The devil came, the devil said, hey, you know, he didn't really say that. Well, he did, no, no, he didn't really say you will surely, did he really say you'll die? Try it and see, free will. I'll try it. God shows up. Why'd you touch the fruit? You know when parents know when kids do something wrong because the kids are acting a little bit different? This is exactly what happened in the garden. Why I know you what hide? happened to Adam. Adam hid. He hid from God. Right? And why did he hide, though? Because he knew he did something wrong. Okay. So innately, innately, the image that God put in him was acting against the, fall the, the, the failure that he had. And now, remember, he didn't know right and wrong before, right? It activated right away. The wrong he did activated the image of right that God had in him. It went completely against it. And the instant it hit, he hid. Because he couldn't stand before a fully righteous God knowing what he had done. 
And the first, now that was the first thing. The second thing he did was lie after he got caught. He wouldn't accept responsibility for the fact that he took the fruit too. No, no, no. You see, what happened was she gave it to me. And I, I, otherwise, you know, I wouldn't have touched it. But because, you know, it was your fault that you handed her to me anyway, because if I, she wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for you, God. So don't don't blame me for eating the fruit. It was this woman. Then she turned around. No, well, you see, what happened was it was that guy that gave it to me. If he didn't give it to me, then I wouldn't. And that's been man's case ever since. Pass to blame, pass to blame, pass to blame. At that point, when he said, you will surely die, most people say, well, he didn't kill him. No, he did. He implemented death into the world. Death was not a consequence of sin. Man's life began to deteriorate from then on. Day after day after day after day, man's life became shorter and shorter and shorter. Plain and simple. So the image that he's burned into us will be automatically go against what we call, I would say his, his, his image would be what you would call morality. Right. So I find that these concepts are inherently contradictive unless How I'm so? missing something here. Mm -hmm. So Adam and Eve in the garden did not know the concept of right and wrong, correct? Mm -hmm. They only understood this concept after they partook in eating the forbidden fruit, right? Mm -hmm. So if God made man, which was his idea of what man was supposed to be, the perfect man, in his image was Adam. Mm -hmm. And then Adam got lonely. He needed a companion. He made Eve. Well, Adam well, no, Eve, no, no. He didn't get lonely. God said it wasn't good for man to be alone. Right. Yes. Man didn't um, even know that. Exactly. Yes. We didn't know loneliness. We didn't know negativity. Right. We didn't really even know positivity. Right. We just knew existence. We right? knew God. Just, right. We knew. Right. Probably not this phone the idea of like did, did morality always exist in the world and if so to who if adam and eve were the only two people on the planet at the time mm -hmm. um in the garden of eden with the, they were the first two along with the animals i would assume that the animals in and of themselves also did not have any grounding in what morality was yeah you because they all ate plants yeah right so do you mean to tell me that god always knew what morality was yes but he only instilled this knowledge upon adam and eve after they ate the forbidden fruit and so if that's can, true so then how choose. were they created in his image if he denied them the the knowledge of morality no no he didn't deny them the knowledge of morality like yeah. i said the image he is morality. Made them no, with, he explicitly listen, made them without understanding the, morality the image right wrong the, his image is morality god's image is morality yes but adam and eve who were made, were in, made in his were image not, were listen, not listen carefully yes because and i'll tell you why you were told not to do something whether you assigned it as good or evil the creator did assign it as good or evil. You were given a choice. The free will was there. I say, don't touch that tree. You have now been given the choice of touching the tree or not touching the tree. The dichotomy shows up when the, 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 the serpent showed up and gave them the option of not listening and touching the tree. The innate sense that they have of morality, which was innate to them, they went against, which is why the guilt set in after they did what they did. They went directly against the rule that God put down. Now, remember, Adam had a relationship with God long before this event took place. He was with God. He named the animals. He had it all to himself. He got his wife created for him from himself. All of this happened while in good standing relationship with God. One event takes place where he has to decide whether he's following God, the man who created him, who he knew who created him, or take the fruit. The first moral dilemma happened to mankind, and we failed miserably because we picked what we wanted. Didn't, so, here's, again, here's my thing, right? If Adam and Eve were made in God's image, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were, it seems like it seems like this this uh, free will thing is used as like a a, a, a silver bullet for a, any argument against the, um, the the contradictions or anything that so that we can't blame God right because they had free will but again if God made them in His image why did He give them the ability to mess up shouldn't He have He created Satan right or I guess you would argue that Satan created himself because he didn't 
obey God, but mm-hmm. I would say that God created Satan. He knew what Satan would do, right? Because God should know everything that's going to happen, everything that has happened and everything that is happening. Even if God knew in the future what he was going to do, mm-hmm. um, he didn't do anything to stop it, right? He gave just Satan uh, the absolute ability to manipulate everybody. He knew that they would fail, or he had to at least guess that they would fail. I'll mm-hmm. assume that if God is a divine being, he can like deduce infinitely what's going to happen. So he created man so that he could then watch man fail, which he had to have known was going to happen, to then punish man for thousands of years, to then sacrifice himself mm-hmm. to forgive us for the sin that he knew that was going to happen because mm-hmm. he created us. That doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. So so you would prefer to not have free will then is what you're saying? That's not what I'm saying whatsoever. None well, of what, what I just what, said has to do with any of that. We what are I'm talking saying, of- is Bye, that- Amy. Hold on. Bye, Amy. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. I never wanted you following me anyway, so it's not really a, a loss to me. Have fun. See you later. Bye. All right. All now right. back to you. So, yeah. So, um, again, God knew all this stuff was going to happen, but he let it happen. He let us suffer, right? This, even if you give us free will. Um, mm-hmm. Do you think that despite the fact that we have free will, because I found these statements also very contradictory, uh, people often say that we have free will, which I, I, I believe we do, right? Um, but not because of God, uh, but that we have free will, but God has a plan for us. How can God have a plan for us? How can he steer our lives in a particular direction and allow things to happen to us or not allow things to happen to us um, if we have free will? Does he know what we're going to do? He can't affect what we're going to do, but he knows. Does he steer us in the right path? Um, does he put signs in a way that we ignore or look out for? What about kids who were born and die in, at the age of five mm-hmm. uh, from cancer? What what was their purpose? Why Why did God do that to them? So, so why did God I know I asked a lot of that questions. That? No, no, I have yes. no problem with the question. Right. So right away, when I attribute something good to God, it's a problem. When you attribute something bad to God, that's normal. No, not at all. Uh, but I you believe, said, why I, did I God let that happen? Or right. uh, so when, how did you know? No, you didn't say let that happen. Why did God do that to the kid when he said he gave him gave him let, cancer? Let me, let me let me let me reward that. Why did he allow that to happen to them? If like, what's the purpose of a child being born? Right. Um, living until five years old, getting cancer and then dying. Right. Um, without ever having known God. Let's say the parents weren't Christians. Like, does that mm-hmm. child now go to hell? And if God knew this was going to happen and created this person and knew that they would get cancer, why would he allow that to happen? And I would uh, really appreciate an answer that God just knows and that he's right because he's God. No, that's not what I was going to tell you all right. at, at all. And OK, so first of all, I'm not your typical what you would consider Christian. OK, okay. so. The same way I'm not going to put you in an atheist box or or a typical liberal box, which I did before and I don't anymore. I would appreciate not being put in the box that prior Christians have shown you that Christianity is. Okay, sure. um, that would be much much appreciated because I I don't want to be stared like Amy did in the chat. She's exactly like the mindset that you just presented where, oh, I see you're just a hypocritical, judgmental. Well, that's what you think. Then move on. We're not, I don't really need to have your approval in my life. I have kids for that. Um, when we look at life in general, we are living in a fallen world. Ever since that mistake that Adam, mistake that Adam and Eve committed in the garden, we are now forced to live in a world of our own making because it really is of our own making. Because of the sin of Adam and Eve, which is why people don't like Adam and Eve in the Christian world anymore, by the way, is because from that, all, everything in the world, both physical, metaphysical, took a turn for the worst. And it all, just like they, their bodies started deteriorating, everything on the earth started to deteriorate. To say that he allows them, it's not that he's allowing it in terms of he created that to happen, you made the mistake, here's the consequence, and it shall go forth ever since. His plan then was to rectify all wrong. <clears throat> all of it. Now, if I have if I have a, a judicial system, okay, and my son is now incarcerated, I have two options. I can bust into jail and pull him out. Or he can serve his time. And at the end of his time, he is free. I don't set the time. The judge sets the time. So here I am. I commit a crime or my son commits a crime. He gets into jail. He has 20 years to serve. Within that 20 years time, he has time to contemplate life and decide whether or not when he gets out, he's going to be doing something right or wrong. 
but I can't pull him out before that time. I can appeal. I can appeal to the good graces of the judge and the judge can say no, because the rule is 20 years. He gets 20 years and the 20 years he gets out. When Adam and Eve did what they did, there was a rule put down <laughs> law. Okay? You shall stay fallen. Now you're separated from me. You will continue to go. And this is the time frame I've allowed it to go for. He set that time, not me. I don't get to decide, why couldn't you come earlier? Why didn't you do something earlier? He set the time for things to go to fruition for his purposes. That one I cannot intervene on and I cannot question. Because in my opinion and the way I see it, he is the creator. He set that in place. Because now we are, remember, we're not talking about the atheist view about this. We're talking about why the Christian believes what the Christian believes. Right. And the Christian has to believe it based on what, the, what God said he is. Okay, so we want to make sure we set that framework before I continue. At the end of our time, he sent Jesus and said at just the right time, he sent his son. End of our punishment on terms of law. He switched off the law and now we have under grace. Now it's just like a probation period. No different. You have to stay clean. You can't do that. Otherwise you fall back under it. It's, in, it's no different. It is a, literally no different. The time frame, the punishment, all of it is set because of Adam and Eve, not because God wanted to, oh, I see the future and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he knew, but he also gave you the choice. Did, could we have been in a different situation if Adam or even just Adam didn't touch the apple or the fruit or whatever it was? I'm sure we would have been in a different position. But he could also have been like, no, because he didn't stop the wife from doing it. But I'm not God. I can't make this. I can go based on what I know happened. You took the fruit after I told you not to took the fruit. And here's the consequence for taking the fruit. I told you what would happen. I sent my son, though, to be the ultimate sacrifice for the same mistake you did. It wasn't even my mistake, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the mistake on for you. So that is the answer that I gave. I'm not saying that because, oh, Jesus is the end all. Oh, you know, the silver bullet. It's not a silver bullet. It's the, the, the way he laid it out. I don't get to question the way he laid it out. The sin happened. The punishment happened. Boom. The consequence and then the, re the, re the renewal of life that Jesus came to do. It's, it's in the Christian lineup, whether or not I believe I want that to be the case is inconsequential. I don't have to accept Jesus. No one has to accept Jesus. They don't have to. You don't even have to. And you haven't. And that's, you know, you've cut that off as an option. That's done. So that, the, like I said before to you, the end of it all has to be what you decide to do with your life is yours. Is there an option for you to pick another option? Or always will be, until it's not. And at that point, everybody will know whether or not their choices were right and wrong. The thing I keep telling people, the worst I will be is dead. The worst you will be is eternally in, in torment. So I, I prefer to, if, even if I were to take a, a humanistic approach to this, the worst, the worst I want to be is is you know with him as opposed to just burning so even if i just die and that's the end of it then I, I didn't lose anything in life i mean what what is it what is a christian losing in life that that by not doing what they're you know what, what exactly am i losing depends on what fulfills you uh, right so I, what but right. what, what am i losing as a christian if i looked at your life versus mine mm -hmm. what am i losing when i die um you're talking about from your perspective i mean oh no from you okay so if i live my christian life mm -hmm, and you live right. yours mm -hmm. okay and there is no god i live my agnostic atheist life whatever right? whatever life you live okay. yeah and, right. and 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 we both die okay what in life did i lose again that depends on what fulfills you i don't, yeah, I don't but, know so, what fulfills you right so but i didn't i didn't endure in life okay i live the way i want or i live christian life Okay. Based but, on your end of life, how you how you see life ending, right? You just die. Is that yes. how you see it? Okay. And if I just die, then whatever I did in life didn't really matter because I wouldn't be affected after death by what I did in life. Well, we don't base life on death. 
that's the problem, right? I don't say that because I'm going to die one day, I should not live a fulfilling life. The purpose of life is to give life purpose, right? right. It's not to give death purpose. Christians seek to give death purpose. Oh, no, we're not uh, giving death purpose. No, I think I think uh, that's what. Well, you live means. this life for the next. You don't live I, this life for this. I life. live this life for God, and He takes care of the next. There's a big difference. Like okay, I said, so the you wording live this matters life for God, but not for you. Yes, I, live I don't live. Me. I don't. But it is for me because for me to live is Christ, and for me to die is gain. That is how we see it. Okay, you see it as not living life. I am fully living life. Like I am a hundred percent living life. I can still go skiing and jump off the tallest mountain and all that stuff. And some people might see life as sleeping with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, all simultaneously on the same day for weeks on end. Well, why, 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 why can't I, why can't the atheist also go skiing and, and I'm saying like you can, I'm not saying you can't, I'm telling you right. but I, as a Christian, I am living life to the fullest. Right. 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 So right. that, that the life itself doesn't affect me. We are talking about a different type of level of living here. Me living so, life to the fullest, me living life to the fullest is in your mind would be what? Um, doing things that make me happy, doing things that fulfill me having positive relationships, mm -hmm. uh, doing things that are fun and exciting, uh, whatever they may be, um, and not restricting myself on particular things that God says that like I can't do, I guess, like mm -hmm. having sex outside of marriage um, would be one particular example. Um, not, not like a necessity. I'm not like going out and having like a ton of sex as a lot of people think atheists are just like outside fucking everybody they want to um mm -hmm. but you know just not having restrictions like that on my life not having to second guess whether or not i've sinned in the day and constantly living in fear that i'm going to do something wrong in the eyes of god and then having to confess to god and worrying whether or not if i pray will god uh like uh answer my prayers to me that's a life that i've lived and it's a life of fear which is don't worry about that <clears throat> Yes, you do. No, um, you're telling uh, me what I worry about? Not you, not you, not you in particular, Marlon, but you cannot say that there are no Christians out no, there. No, we don't do worry not. about it. No, it's not a worry for us. You can't speak for everybody, Marlon. No, because listen, as Christians a Christian, as a Christian, you just, it's not a worry. So what is it? It is a lifestyle that we live. It's not, okay, let me put it like this. And and just like you think that, okay, uh, let me see if the best way to phrase this. There is a way to live the Christian life the way God intended, and there is a way to live the life of a Christian the way God did not intend. I can live because he did not give me a spirit of fear or timidity. That was his words to me, which means I should not be living in fear of anything at all. And that means anything, because if he did give me the option of forgiveness, then I should not fear because I have forgiveness. But the mere fact that I have forgiveness means that he cares and I should be weary of committing sins intentionally towards him. My life isn't going to be lived in fear as a Christian. And if I find myself living in fear as a Christian, I have to start questioning my belief in God. I do, because either I'm really taking him at his word or I am not. There is no middle ground of I'm kind of taking him by his word. And I'm either you are or you're not. He said, don't fear. He said to live life without that aspect of fear, because in God, there is no darkness. There's only light. And if there is only light, ye know, I know he knows my sin already. So why am I afraid of telling him something he already knows? But he's not going to be like, I know you. I knew you, you knew that sin before you told me and I'm going to hold it. No, he's waiting. It's like me having my kid steal something from the kitchen. I, he, the kid broke the law by stealing something out of the kitchen. I can see him taking the piece of candy out the kitchen. I'm watching him from the living room. I know full well this brother just took that piece of candy out the kitchen. And he going to walk in the room and act like I didn't see nothing. One, or I don't know, or he could hide it from me, right? And I'm like, I'm watching him. I'm like, I'm going to wait to see if he tells me he took the candy. I'm going to wait. And he eats the candy. And then I later come back and say, um, did, did you take the candy? No, 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 I didn't take the candy. No, I go and show him and I know he took the candy. What's the punishment for stealing that candy? I get a spanking. Oh, did you take the candy? Yeah. I'm not going to give you the spanking, but don't do it again next time. That's the Jesus aspect of it. 
Okay. It seems like you have a very good grasp on how a lot of Christians should live their life. Um, what do you, what, what would you say to the ones who don't uh, have this grasp of Christianity that you do? Who, I don't know do what I can, I, I don't know what I can or, tell right? anybody. Who are not as knowledgeable in Christianity as, as uh, they get, get knowledgeable. That's, that's our rule. Our, 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 mm -hmm. our, our idea. If, okay, if I love somebody, shouldn't I want to know something about them? Uh, shouldn't, yes. shouldn't I, if I have a wife, shouldn't I know her favorite color? Know Absolutely. what flower she likes. Knows mm -hmm. what time she. Look, if you like breakfast, I'll make. If you don't like breakfast, I'm not making you. If I want to know my wife, I'm going to take the time to know my wife. Like I will literally take time out of my day to know who she is. I will call her all the time, or if it's not, I cuddle all the something. I will act accordingly. But when you're in a religion with God, it's like having a king on his throne, and he has a concubine. It ain't his wife. It ain't his queen. She's there. I'll use her once in a while for something, get my rocks off, and go about my business. That's not Christianity, and nor should it be the relationship that one has with God. You have to be able to be in communion with the man to understand the man and for him to know you. It's mutual. And that bridge has now been created through the one called Jesus. Now, when I try to tell people, hey, how do you live the Christian life? I said, part of it is you live it, and the other half is he lives it for you. Oh, how is that possible? He just takes over your life? No, 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 no. When I become, it's like if I go out, like let's go back to the wife analogy. If I'm going out into the public sphere and a female sees me, okay, and I am in real communion with my wife, I really love my wife, whether or not I'm wearing a symbol on my ring finger that I'm married, I will be exuding it because I will not be looking at anybody else because that's my wife back home. No one else has that view for me. I don't look at anybody else that way. I'm not trying to get to know some other female that way. Some woman approaches me and starts to compliment me. Whether or not I accept a compliment has nothing to do with my relationship with my wife because nothing she says is going to affect my relationship with my wife. Now she says, you're really hot. You want to go home with me? I don't even have to address her. I don't have to look at fear and think, oh my goodness. Oh, she just gave me an opportunity to do something wrong. And the first thing that flushes over me is fear that I might be stepping out on my wife. I wouldn't have that fear. You know why? Because I'm confident in the relationship I have with my wife. I can simply look at her and say, eh, nah, I'm gone and walk off. Wouldn't even be a problem for me. Wouldn't be a loss. Wouldn't be anything because the relationship I have with my wife supersedes all the things I could possibly do in life. So in other words, my relationship with my wife is being lived out through me. The same way God's relationship with me is lived out through me. No amount of man's influence is going to stop me from living that life. Even if they are angry with me, hate me, despise me, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Because the truth that I live out isn't mine. He has, uh, the relationship I have with my God, with God himself, will be shown out. The same way this girl in the chat you're so high and mighty, you act like you live the whole... It's not what I believe. I'm not trying to come across condescending, but I can't help but tell people what I know. It, uh, just because I can convey to, to Blackbird here what I believe does not make me condescending. I'm not looking down at anybody, nor do I look up at anybody. I don't think he's less than me or more than me. He's living his life. We are here to have a conversation. I'm not trying to convince Blackbird to become a Christian again or to go back to God. That's between him and God. I'm simply espousing for everybody listening that if I truly am following God, if I truly, truly am following God, there is no amount of influence that man can put on me that will be worth my life to put it on risk to not be with this man, be with this God at the end of all time. I, 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 I'm not willing to put anything in front of that option at all. Right now, I have a relationship with him in spirit. I would love to be in person with God. And if living this life is the precursor to that, I'm going to do what I need to do, have to do, want to do to establish that end goal. If people don't want to do that, that is fine because that's part of free will. That's why God will never force himself. He didn't force himself on Adam. But he did tell him the rules of the game. 
If you do that, you live the rest of your life tilling the land, sweating. You can't eat until you sweat and may till the land and you're going to have birth pains. He gave the consequence of their action. Man has then lived with the consequence of earth dying beneath him because that's the fallen state of all things now. God withdrew himself from the man's life. He withdrew himself. He can only placate man by law at that point. He could not create a bond or bridge between them because the punishment was still enacted. I mean, Until the time that he decided the punishment was up and was giving you a way back to come back and talk to him directly without, the, without actually, the barrier of, of the fall. Didn't God consistently interfere with man <clears throat> on like a a physical level? Uh, yes, he interacted with man. Bible? Yeah, right, he yeah. did. Um, usually very violently. Uh, or, so? or if not, or if he's, oh, there were two instances where he, he was, well, three instances where he was really flooded violent. flooded the entire earth and killed everybody on, on yep. the planet. Mm -hmm. Um uh, what about when he gaslit Abraham to kill his own son? I don't know about gaslit. He asked him to do something and then pulled him back. How would, how would you? And you see, you're attributing, and again, I understand why, because you're attributing the current event of things and how man thinks now to God. And I can't do that. That's not God. Okay. It is not. I see it as if you trick somebody into uh, seeing if they how much they would worship you, because mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe God is insecure. Um, and he, you know, wasn't sure whether or not Abraham would make the right choice or not. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if he was still like hurt over what Adam did. And then it was like, no, I'm just kidding. To me, that's what gaslighting is. Do you work I, out? I know I'm using a very, uh, I'm I sorry. Know, but do you work out? Uh, I have not exercised recently, no. But, but, but you I, worked I have out before, right? Yes, okay. I have worked out. Do you train yet. your body to failure? Mm, no, I'm very Have you much. heard of training your body to failure? Yes, I have. Okay. It's a very effective way to gain muscle and a very effective way to gain stamina. Okay. Train your body to failure. You push the body, push the body, push the body, push the body until the body can do no more work and you stop. And you push the body, push the body until the body stops. Why is it then that if man can have that concept of training to failure, why is it that God can't allow somebody to be tested to failure? Tested to failure? So mm -hmm. what if Abraham failed? What if Abraham failed? Who's in charge of the body and soul? Do you think, do you really think for a minute that Abraham, knowing God, would care if his son got taken? To kill his own son? Do you think, um, it's a legit question. If God is in charge of all, mm -hmm. do you really believe that if God told him to do something, that the end result would be horrible to, 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 to Isaac's life? Yes. So this is the point that we get into, that we can do through the word of God. And this is the, this is what people have used mm -hmm. for thousands of years to justify horrible things things like the crusades mm -hmm. right by using the word of, because god said so right then we sh can do and we're not but god didn't okay so. that god never right? uh, told anybody to do the crusades not once so i don't know where you of get course that. not no of course not but people have used this justification through Just the like, word yeah, because right because the bible is the word of god no right? i and, said i said man has been known throughout the years to do things that god never sanctioned and he will allow because man has free will there are tons of time man has gone against God's will and has done absolutely everything. Heck, he put the Israelites in the in the in wilderness for 40 years because of rebellion. Like, come yeah, on. It's not, it's not... he, which is funny because he literally sent Moses up into a mountain, right? Um, and then he made rules that mm -hmm. the Israelites were not yet aware of. For Moses to come down and find them breaking those rules, that rules no, that no, they no, did not no, know no, about, no, and no, then no. got mad at them for they were breaking rules, rules already them. implemented. That were not new rules that they were doing. There was the not ten new commandments rules. in particular, like not he. They he was were not breaking mad at them new for, rules. They made a golden calf, right? Which was, that a was false a, idol. Listen, which he that just was, made that commandment for. That was long before. That was already established where? long before that he shouldn't do that in the Bible. Yes, long before. Where in the Bible? Long that before that, you weren't supposed to have gods. Where in the Bible specifically does God say that you shall not have any other false idols? Because I remember him specifically being very mad about that calf, which is one of the Ten Commandments. Where in the Bible previously did God say that you can't have any other false what, idols? What 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 gods did um did Moses have to encounter when he talked to the Pharaoh? What gods did Moses have yeah, to who, encounter? Who did the Pharaohs believe in? Who did the Pharaohs believe in? Who did the Egyptians believe in? The Egyptians believed in Set. Raw, many gods, right? Egyptian gods, right. They many were gods. Yes. There were many gods? Did they yes. believe in the God? No, they did not. Were they his people? The Israelites. Or, you mean the Israelites Egyptian, or the Egyptians? The Egyptians were not his people, right? No. Why? Because they didn't worship him. 
Exactly. Yeah, but God made no devout have, no, no, hold, rule hold on, to do hold so. on, hold on. Why? Why is it that they were not His people? Because they didn't work. They you didn't be, worship. You can't God. be the people of God if you don't worship that God. Exactly. Right? Like, yeah. You right. shall have no. You, if you're following me, shall have no God before me. That was in the Ten Commandments, right? Which were Good. after the Israelites hold on, made hold that on. calf. Yes. Hold on. Yes, that was written specifically in there. Okay. My question to you is this. Do you not believe, or I'll put it this way better, you wouldn't believe this because you're not coming from my perspective. God was talking to man. Men went to very different gods. They were no longer his people. What would you deduce from that? Say that you one tell more me time, what please. would you deduce from that? Say that one more time. God is the God of man. Okay. Man decided that God wasn't enough and created his own people, his own God. Right. Case in point, the Egyptians. Right. They were then no longer his people. What would you deduce from that? Um, it's not what I would deduce. It's what the Israelites would de would do. So the thousands of Israelites were not speaking to God. Um, God was speaking to Moses, mm -hmm. right? Um, so Moses had the word of God, and Moses tries he may spread the word of God to the Israelites. Um, but I don't think the Israelites were focused on just God. They were focused on being slaves, and they knew that that was wrong. And I don't think that they cared for the gods that the Egyptians believed in. They cared for not being enslaved, which is what Moses preached, right? My God says that you shall not enslave their people. So, you know. Now, um, okay. Right. Now, where where did the where did the Israelites mm -hmm. come from when they were given those ten commandments? Just before they they, they got the ten commandments, where were they coming from? <sighs> it's been a while, Marlon. I I can't remember every single thing about uh, Exodus. Okay, so they were coming from the said place we were talking about, right? They were in captivity. Egypt. Okay, I thought you meant like right before that. Right. I, I yeah. know that they were and, in the desert and, for a while. Yeah. Right. And so, what did they do in Egypt? They Egypt worshipped multiple gods. Right. Okay. If you were there for a while and you saw this happening over and over, multiple, multiple gods, mm -hmm. why wouldn't he put a commandment? Hey, you ain't gonna have no gods but me. Well, because um, when you think about the Israelites after they fled Egypt, right, and then they mm -hmm. were. I guess they were getting bored in the desert while Moses was up on the mountain for too long, whatever it was, mm -hmm. right? Um, they were like, hey, you know, let's let's freaking have a huge party or whatever, you know, and and do do whatever. Um, and do you think that they knew that there was like a single God or he was like yes. the okay? So you're saying that they willingly made the choice to turn to not to other gods in particular, but right, but to have an idol in this particular mm -hmm. case, which God is like behaving yeah. against an idol. Um, I guess to look upon to to worship, and that's why God got upset. I I do believe that they did exactly what they did because of rebellion. Yes, rebellion because like Moses was like up there too long, and he was. Uh, I guess they lost faith in him, right? That he wasn't coming back. Regardless of what their reasoning was, right. they knew better and did wrong. Okay, so you, then God made now. That what, what did what did what now? If you have to understand too, what what Moses what he what he witnessed, he got mad about. And even he sinned by breaking the Ten Commandments on the ground. You understand? Right. He just came from witnessing God directly. Right. Like his face, she, and he came back down all holy. And as soon as he witnessed something that he didn't like. Damn it. Now, what I'm telling you is this. I cannot base man's reaction on a holy God. Moses literally, literally just came in down, inundated with the glory of God, and he was shining. Woo, man, I'm holy. And as soon as my brother saw something on an earthly manner that was like, woo, he acted on it. Now, is that reflective that God didn't do what God did? Or is that reflective that God made him angry? No. Man chose a manly route. The commandments were still intact because it was still true. God was still who he was, regardless of how Moses behaved. And Moses was, David was a man after God's own heart. That's what we keep hearing. Well, that must mean that God's heart is sinful. No, he was always after God's heart. And if you're always pursuing something, you're always after the heart of God. That doesn't mean that at times you're not going to reach your goal. David failed multiple times at doing that but every time he failed he realized it and went back or that confession thing did his sacrifice did his penance whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. i cannot judge man's action 
and plant it on God. Uh, see, that's what God, God's okay with that. That's, that's a God thing. You Christians, you see when you do that, that must mean that God's okay with big, big, bigotry. That must mean God's okay with hate. Oh, look, the crusades, God's okay with that. Oh, look, slavery, God's okay with that. Man's action does not... I say that God is implicit in that. He is, it, because you have free will. If I take... You, okay, you say to me, man, I really hate that guy over there. Or even not so much. I really dislike that guy over there. Man, I don't like him. And I like you. I really like you. You're a really cool guy. But you don't like that guy? He must have done something to you really, really egregious. I'm going to go kill that guy. For you. You never told me to go kill that guy. You just told me you don't like him. You never even told me to go beat him up. But then when I go beat him up or kill that guy and I come back and see, see what I did for you? Bro, I didn't ask you to do that. That wasn't, that wasn't me, but I like you. Yeah, but, but just because you like me don't mean you're going to do that in my name. That's, that's nonsense. You don't do that. That's exactly how, but it, what are you going to do? You don't know I'm going to do it. That's one thing. Even if I tell you I'm going to do this. The point is I'm not reflecting what you wanted. I am not doing anything you wanted to do. Right. Well, let's say, for example, somebody ends up suffering. Somebody you love ends up suffering. Because God mm -hmm. supposedly is all loving, right, um, and all good. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say somebody you love is suffering. Mm -hmm. And you have the power to prevent that from happening, but you don't. Right. What does that make you? Okay. Right. I'll, I'll give you a Which is how I view... Like, you right. can't say God is all-loving and all-powerful if he refuses to destroy evil, if he's all-powerful, or if he be, is all-loving if he also refuses to prevent evil. Um, yeah, so. Right, okay. Right. Somebody's suffering, you see them suffering, uh, and you just let it happen, despite the fact that you have the power to prevent it. Right, okay. Um, so if I see somebody suffering, somebody I have the power, and, yeah, and I have the power to prevent it. Mm-hmm. And I don't. And the person wants to be done with suffering. Is that the other part of it? Or you I'm don't pretty know sure we would wants? all want to be done with suffering. I don't know anybody who willingly wants to suffer unless like they're sadomasochists, but even that's temporary, right? I'm talking about actual true suffering, people starving to death, right, but, people okay. being murdered and killed, right? People right. being tortured. What about right. those people, right? God loves them, but he allows them to suffer despite the fact that he can't stop it. How, how would you look at any other person, right? If I literally was watching my child suffer, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right uh being tortured over the course of days right because this is not like god is just like letting this happen over the course of a day or right. a minute this is like for thousands of years uh watching people suffer and i can stop that person from torturing my child and i don't mm -hmm. despite i had i can absolutely stop it from happening it's not it's their free will it's the the torturer's free will and the person who's in that situation whatever their decisions led them there um i have the power to stop it i don't wouldn't you say that that would be like I don't know. How, how would you explain that? Okay. I'll give, you a, I'll give you two personal examples. Okay. One's my dad. Um, my dad suffered quite a bit before he died. He was a Christian. Um, very, very, very strong Christian man. Um, he got sick and he was in the hospital for, I think, a month or a month and a half. And he went from... I could look at him, but I couldn't. That's where he went to, okay? He swole up, but a week or so before he passed, he didn't want nobody seeing him in the family because of how he looked and how he felt. Now, mind you, he was suffering, okay? He was suffering. He didn't have the view that you think he should have at that point, he, he just didn't. Um, while he might have been upset that he wouldn't see me grow and he wouldn't see the family grow up, he knew where he was going. So the suffering was temporary to him. While it was painful, it was temporary because of who he knew and he knew the end. I, however, was left to be pissed at God. And when I tell you I was pissed at God, I, I, was, I was livid. 
at this creature they called God. So when I tell you I know how you feel about certain things, about how he allows this and allows that, and sometimes I even went to say, you made this happen. You caused this. I spent my days angry at this man, and I spent 30 years pissed off at God, literally 30 years pissed off, to the point where I would cuss at him out loud for what he did. And then one day, I'm sitting mad, and I remember this very specifically, this day, very specific day, I was sitting in my living room, and in one of those places where I was absolutely reliving my entire childhood and this so-called God that took him from me. Mind you, I was still going to church, still saying I'm a Christian, still saying all of the things and making people believe that I'm following this so-called God. And in my heart and in my relationship, you talk about the biggest middle finger you can show somebody, I was showing him every day. So I was an atheist trying to behave like, or I was an agnostic trying to behave like a Christian, but either way, I hated them, the entity called God. And I sat there in my living room, and I was looking around it, and I realized I'm in a house in America. I have a job. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking all the way back as to how I got here. And instantaneously, this revelation came to me. And I don't think it was just me. I mean, I'm, I don't think it was me just going back and thinking this wonderful thought that I'm so smart. But I can see the, the wisdom in a lot of the things now. I wouldn't be here in this location if five different events hadn't taken place and one of them being my father's death. Um, the reason I don't look back at it in anger anymore is because I finally realized, wait, my dad wasn't even mad. Who am I? The man who went through the suffering wasn't mad. He wasn't pissed at God. He, he was even, ex at some point, one in there, he was excited that he was possibly going to get to go home. My dad, the one who was suffering the most, he couldn't breathe, couldn't drink water, couldn't, like, he ruptured on his bed on his birthday. Okay, that's how much discomfort he was in. His body ruptured out. That's how he passed. In one of the most horrific ways he could possibly go. And he did not go out angry at God. But here I am stewing 30 years over the loss of a man who was happy to leave because he knew where he was going. I'm sitting in my room all pissed off at God. And look what you did. Look what you did when the man who had the relationship with God that was suffering didn't care. And it came to me that I don't have that right, one, to dictate how someone else's suffering goes. And two, I don't get to decide how someone ends on this earth. But more importantly, I don't get to be angry at somebody who had nothing to do with it. Because again, the fallen nature of earth is what it is. Earth is going to take its course. It's going to die. Man's going to die. Everybody dies either by a natural cause or by somebody else taking your life. I sat there and I was in awe that he could still communicate that information to me. And yes, I do believe he communicated that to me. Because I've had experience since then that was not that vague, to put it mildly. I can't be mad because the person that I'm, I'm worried about suffering didn't suffer the way I think they suffered. They were talking to God the whole time and were content. I don't have that right to put that on God. He, he finally made it clear to me that we live in a fallen world. The world's going to be it is. It's going to act as it is because of the fallen nature of the world. Man's going to be mean to man. Man's going to be pissed off at man. My only true out I have of this world is to leave with him. Like you said, you are in the position and mindset you are because you were at one point following God. You saw something different and you moved away. And that is completely okay. Nobody has... Um, I have never been... Okay, with Christians telling you, well, oh, look, you're so dumb. How would you go away from God? And but well, then you're just being just like somebody else. It's just it's not any different. You you find you you'll either find him or you won't before the end of your life. Um, you'll either seek him or you won't before the end of your life. But either way, you're gonna do what you want to do before the end of your life. <laughs> so it doesn't it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. I can only tell you my experience with this person called God. I can only tell you my experience with having, having followed him 
off and on for the last 15, 20 years. But I can definitely tell you, I have been to the point where I cursed him, told him to shove it. I have told him everything any man could tell God, I have told him out loud in my head, in my heart, lived it and not cared a thing about God to the point where I would have, if I could find him anywhere, I would end him. That's how angry I was with God. I've gotten there. But so for me to be where I'm at now tells me two things. There is no place I can go to, angry at him or not, that he will not still try to reach me. And I'm not going to be so far gone that he can't reach me. So that's, that's on mine. I can't tell Christians how to live, but I can tell them this. Um, if you live in a position of fear all the time, you're not going to experience the real God because in him there is no fear. Am I going to have bouts with it? Yes. I'm going to have bouts with it, but I don't live there. That's what I tell people with suffering. It's, a, it's temporary. So, and I understand mm, it's temporary. So it's okay, to us, it's okay for us to suffer because uh, whether or not we suffer in life, uh, the destination that we're going to is really all that matters, right? Um, based on how we no, live our lives. No, no, it's not because of the destination that matters. Uh, I'll, let me rephrase it. My dad understood where he was going. That's different. Okay, the he destination. Understood. Yeah, he understood the destination. Um, he understood what was coming after he died, so there was no fear of death. In other words, okay, he didn't. He wasn't afraid of dying. The suffering he was experiencing in life, he understood was part of life. Some people will have suffering and some will not go through as much suffering as others, but it's all part of life. Even right, if it it's... happens at the worst, it happens at the best. Either way, there's a spectrum and it will happen in there somewhere. At some point in some time, you're going to go through something that you think is the most extreme suffering. Absolutely. That it may not be for someone else, but for you, that's just, this is just insane. So I can't avoid that, okay? So we can't avoid it. But how I view it, through what lens I view it, I sure can. I sure can decide that. And my father, who suffered a lot, viewed it through the lens of whether or not I suffer in this body doesn't matter to me because the end of all of this will be no suffering. This is what I said, right? So uh, we often view this suffering, or we explain it away, that the suffering doesn't matter again because this life what we do in this life is essentially to prepare us for the next right so the suffering of this life you shouldn't focus on mm -hmm. right um or you should see as i don't know not a life. bad thing i guess no it's life. yeah it's life it's life because the next life is what truly matters being with god right so mm -hmm. god allows us to suffer because it doesn't matter then why right. not just why not just bring us to the next life if God wants us to be with him, why, the, the, why does he have to test all of us to find out if we're worthy? As a matter so, of fact, if, why does he test us at all as if he knows what's going to happen to us? So if he killed you right now, you'd be okay with that? If God killed me right now? Yeah, yeah. Of course not. Well, I'd be okay you, with wouldn't, that. you wouldn't care because you'd be dead, but I mean... Well, well afterwards, yeah, of course, yeah. I but afterwards, I you wouldn't, wouldn't care either, I, right? I'd care right now if I died, but afterwards, I would have no conscious existence. But if God did it, then you would care because then you'd realize, crap, there is a God. If yes, yeah, yeah, but but then you'd care, right? Would I care? I, I would be shocked and astonished. I don't know, like I'm, I'm pretty sure, but if it was him and the way he handles afterlife, you'd care. But, Absolutely. If I <laughs> yes. was wrong, if I was wrong about God, I would very much be mad about going to hell. Yes, yes, for sure. But yeah. I don't live my life that way. I don't live my life in the fear of going to hell. And well, I'm not live living in the fear of hell. hell. I don't right. live in the fear of hell. Of course not. A lot of Christians say that, yeah. but I think that I think that that's nonsense, right? I think that a lot we really? do. Yes, it's just explained in a way that it's not. Um, no. It's not. Um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not an ultimatum. It's I, the except. It's a gift, right? God I live in gift the knowledge of hell. It sounds to me like the like to what like abusive partners say. To, no, uh, no, no, to, no. To I live partners, in the knowledge right? of hell. I you live in the knowledge in of hell. The knowledge, knowledge of, of hell. hell, right? And the knowledge of things. But I'm not afraid of it. Yes, because you believe in God and you believe that you're going to heaven, right? Right. Um, which is right. So uh, there's still the ultimatum that if you don't do that, then you go to hell. No. I, I, no, that's, you see, no, because I'm not thinking anywhere near that place anymore. You just think that I'm living the best life that I can and I'm going to go to heaven. 
No, I'm not worried about the life I'm living as the best I can at all. I'm not even, that's not even the frame of mind that I live in. Do you think you're going to heaven? I don't do you think. Know you know you're going to heaven. You know you're going think, to yeah, I don't think you know that. Why would, I, why would I just think it if I, I live the way I'm living, if I just think it? What if that's you're wrong? Kind of, that's a kind of halfway way to, and then I just die. That's okay. No, I mean, what if you're wrong and you, you die and God is like, nah, bro, you're going to hell. And what then that's say? what happens because he's the arbiter of all of it. What am I going to do about it at that point anyway? Like, what <laughs> can, can I do. really do? Exactly. 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 Right. So why would I worry about that and, and sacrifice that? I'm wasting all that time worrying about it. And then I'm for, for sure going to end up there because I'm not focusing on the relationship. I can spend my entire life worried about hell. Okay? Mm -hmm. All of it. Oh, I'm not doing that because of hell. I'm not doing that because of hell. I'm not doing that because it's like I'm not doing certain things because my wife would leave me. Why, why, is, why not? Why are you not cheating? Because my wife would leave me. Why is there an alternative me. in hmm? Christianity? Why is there an alternative? Because right? there's why, always why, there's why always... isn't why isn't there just like death and heaven? Right? Like why does God why is there an alternative that allows people to suffer for eternity, by the way? What do you think hell is? What do you think hell is? In terms of the, the true nature of hell, what do you think hell really is? Uh, an existence where people suffer for all eternity in a lake of fire, like it's Wait, described in the Bible. What's, in what's the one thing, the one big thing missing from all of that? What's the one thing missing from all of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's missing? What's missing in hell? Yeah. Wi-Fi? Well, that too, but what else? <laughs> I don't know. God. God? Yeah, but God is the one who allows it to happen. No, but the real, the real, the real hell... The real hell is absence of God the with no way back. God, this is no, the existence of hell is burning in a lake of fire. Even if God is absent from that, he had to, if he is the creator of all things, mm -hmm. he created, Satan can't create things. Satan right. didn't create hell. God right. creates hell and then lets people be with him to suffer with him in hell. God he made that for people who do not accept him. Okay, right? so then you have that a choice to escape it? abusive. It sounds oh. like what an abusive partner does. Either you make this choice or you suffer the consequence. That's exactly what it is. And Christians have a very good way of wording this in a no, way that where it doesn't sound like, no, he's not saying that you'll, uh, it, uh, you'll it's go to hell or go to heaven. It's just accept him and go to heaven. And if you don't, you just so happen to go to hell. That is abusive thing that's no stockholm okay syndrome. okay well let's i think let's christians it, have stockholm syndrome well let's put it this way let's let's let me let me let me and i'm not trying your, to be i'm not trying to be i understand let me run your my... school of thought let me run your school of thought down the train okay mm -hmm. it's abusive to think as though there are only two options at the end of your life oh uh, what do we have then i would like to i no, need you to no, actually no, you're asking me you're telling me that there's a it's an abusive thing to only give you two options right so what do we have at the end of uh, our life Right. Well, you actually have that choice before the end of your life, but you know that's either here or there because you have the choice to live or don't live it. So, what choices do we have? You technically heaven have or hell. Choice. What else do we have? What do you mean? What you don't have no other choice. That's Not that you. Options. No, no, no. You don't have any choice either way. The options of where you end up is either outside the house or in the house. Oh, but I can choose based on my actions. So I absolutely do have a choice. I can choose yeah. to accept God. I can Perfect. choose not to accept God. If I choose not Perfect. to accept God, I go to hell. Right. That's a choice. That's your so I have choice. Two options. You've I can decided to that. worship God or not worship God. But you're looking at it, and again, this is this is the difference between people who had to look at it like that versus the Christian. Okay. Why would you pick God? Why would I pick God? Yeah, why would you pick God? Uh, because God wants me to worship him. God wants me to believe in him. Then Through you faith. would never pick God. Then you would never pick God. That's why you would never pick God. I can why, see why you won't pick God. Why would you? Pick if that's your options of why you God pick wants God, to be worshipped. No, no, no. Okay. God I'm gets saying, mad if I'm, you worship anybody else. He wants I'm, to be worshipped. He doesn't get mad if you worship somebody else. You have that option. The result you of you worship him. It's so mad that he sends you to burn listen, for listen, all eternity if, in if a fiery you, hell. But that's the result of the choice you make. Exactly. Understand well, one of two options. Okay. Again, if you want to not worship God, you are free to do so. The end result is the end result. Oh, I'm sorry. I cut out for like a split second. That's okay. If you choose to not follow God, you then don't follow God. The end result is the end result, as is. What, what does that mean? Be specific. What do you mean? You said the end result is the end result. Like it's the I, end I, result. I often notice that Christians very much try to not use charged language when it comes to these concepts, how about you just say, if you don't choose God, you go to hell. Why? Well, you will, you but that? you know that. That's not. That's not no, no, no. knowledge. Well, why? Why won't you say it? 
What do you mean, why won't I? I said that multiple right. times throughout this whole conversation. Right, okay. So in this, you said the end result is the end result. Like it's yes, like it's of your, of your choices. thing that happens, right? So if you don't, right? It seems like nobody ever wants to blame God for this because it is his. Why would I blame God? Because it's God's fault whether or not I choose to live my life the way I want to and not accept him. And then he. Uh, how is it his he, fault that you live the life the way you want to live? How is that his fault? Because why should I only have to worship him? If my only choice You don't. Is... You don't only have to worship him. So what other choices do I have? Not worshiping him. And then where does that lead me? Who cares? It does, you're not worshiping where him. Where does that so lead me, Marlon? Hell, if you don't. It's hell you if you hell. do, right? That is, an, that is literally what coercion is. When you don't have a choice to do something or not because the end result okay, so is a very negative consequence. Let that me is what coercion is. If I told you to eat an apple or I blow your head off, what well, choice do let you me have? let me put it to you this way. Let me put it to you this way. Okay. If God is who he says he is, he didn't have to give me a choice at all. What does that mean? I'm sorry. He didn't have to give me a single choice at all. He didn't have to give me a chance at all. So you said if God says give, who look, he says he, could he literally is? have, he could have literally had hell ready. The instant Adam screwed up, he could have just scooped Adam up. <laughs> Didn't do that. Didn't okay. do that. Why? Oh, you've answered this question already, right? Because right. Now God's so God, I God cannot, allow, he allows us to do whatever until you get until to we choose die. whether or not because like he told you, the end result is death. If you do that, Adam, you're gonna die. Adam literally heard those words and said, nah, you go. And then when it finally happened, and then all he got. And Adam, now remember, he heard, you'll die. All he heard was, leave, leave the garden. He didn't get smote right on the spot. He didn't get scooped up and crushed and smashed or thrown into the lakes of hell right then and there. If God is who he says he is as the all-powerful God, he has the right right then and there to smite you. Any sin you do that's against him, he can instantly kill you for. But that's not how he set up the system. And it's his system to set up. We still try to attribute these man-made, well, he should have more of this option and more of this option because we want, we want and our wishes and our, our desires and all we want, 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 want. Give us 15 options, please, God. If I don't serve you this much, I only get this much or I get this. It, that's, that's not how it works. So we have an ultimatum. You do. Yes. You that's, do. That's and what's coercion. wrong with the ultimatum? What's wrong with the ultimatum? Coercion. It's coercion. Is that what the laws of the land are? Coercion? Mm, they are the... If you jump off a cliff, you will die, yes. but you won't fly. That's coercion? If I make the choice to do that, that would be very stupid. Ah, too, right? but that's a risk assessment you take, right? It's a choice. Everything is. A, I'm not saying that everything is not a choice. I'm saying that the what choices the other... you make towards one or the other are limited because you know that the consequences of one... Are perfect and it's the life only is like consequences that. of one right but life is yeah. like that so if i know that jumping off a cliff will kill me i choose not to jump off a cliff but there if i go. know right exactly i choose to not jump off a cliff but right. i can also choose to jump off a cliff but here's the difference mm -hmm. nobody's forcing me to jump off a cliff or not what god does is god puts you at the end of a cliff and mm -hmm. he says either worship me or i or you must jump off and if you don't jump off then well i'm gonna push you off right? or he leaves you on the edge of the cliff with no way off of it he leaves you. That is also hell. You think that's okay? What do you mean? So again, this this is a ultimate. You are still putting right? your manly worlds and your manly desires on an eternal being. So let's say somebody walked me to the end of a cliff, uh -huh. right? And they said, either you come back with me, right? Or you jump off the end of the cliff, uh -huh. right? Obviously, as a person, I know that I'm not going to jump off this cliff because I don't want to die, right. right? But if you take away that choice... Right. And like you say that, um, I don't know, this is so difficult to analogize to life because in life we do a lot of things right over the course of this. Right. So let's say, oh, there it is. Let's say I don't want to come back with you. Mm -hmm. I don't want to come back with you. You're somebody that I do not want to go with. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to say that I want to have the choice to not go with you and to just do whatever I want to do. Right. I don't want to come with you and I don't want to jump off the cliff. Mm -hmm. and you say, no, you can either do one or the other. Right. Um, in this case, if I am forced to go back with you, you are a kidnapper. You have taken me against my will, especially if you threaten me and say that if you don't, then I'm just going to push you off the cliff. But, but that's not how God operates, though. 
It is how God operates. No, no he, well, if, if he did kidnap you then, and you were there before, why did he let you go? So here's the thing. You escaped? Right? Did you escape? You escaped the, the bondage of kidnapping because he kidnapped you before. You were I following mean, him, weren't you? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I pretty much just kind of came to the conclusion of that, right? Of that uh, thing. I don't know how he got there in the first place. But um, if he put me there, right? Because God supposedly creates us, he puts me there. Right, and then you didn't you follow can God at all me. for your own. You didn't at, at no point in your Christianity you followed Him on your own will. At zero point you chose to follow God. No point at all. So no. You said you prayed I, every night. Was that your absolutely. choice to pray every night? Uh, I. Or prayed, you forced? To, you were forced to pray every night. I believe that God was real, and I believe that God. I, okay, I, I, but I then you, so it wasn't forced. No, it wasn't forced. Okay, so you decided to follow Him at one point. Absolutely. So did He just let you go out of bondage? Because you, you equated it to kidnapping and coercion. So I'm asking, did you oh, just decide? If, if I don't have the choice, right? So it, now now we're not talking about the existence of living your life, right? Because when you live your life, that just gets to the end. We're talking about what happens, the consequence, right? Uh -huh. This is the difference between like ontology and like consequentialism, right. right? Sometimes we base choices based on what we know is right, mm -hmm. right? That's like on its face. We do it because it's right. And hopefully the consequences of what we do that are right all right and sometimes we make choices based on what we perceive the consequences to be right this is consequentialism in philosophy right we make choices because the end result will be good or bad right and sometimes we make choices because like if i choose not to lie it's because i choose not to lie or i could choose not to lie because it'll lead to negative consequences it really depends on how you view it in the case of god right this is consequentialism you can say to yourself in your life throughout your life right that I worship God because I choose to worship God, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I know, you know, right, that if I don't worship God, then, I, then I'm going to hell, right? And you can say, well, I choose to worship God because uh, I, I want to exist in his image. I want um, the, the love of God. I want his acceptance, right? Um, and I want to be like God. Or you can make those choices for yourself, but what consequences do those lead to? You say that if I live my life as a Christian, I know that I'll go to heaven, right? And to you, you can ignore the prospect of hell. Mm -hmm. Right. But there's still the prospect of hell. That consequence still is being imposed upon man. Mm -hmm. Right. So Christians, what I think Christians do is that Christians believe in God and they don't think about like, oh, it's a choice of whether or not to go to hell. They say it's just accepting God's gift. Right. And hell is the absence of God. But if that was so true and God truly just wanted us to worship him and accept him, then why give us eternal suffering as a consequence because there are people who will worship god like you asked me earlier well what if god killed you right now and you find out god you find out god is real would you care well of course because now i would know that i was wrong and now i'm screwed mm -hmm. right because i'm probably going to go to hell because i didn't believe in god that is consequentialism that is the consequence you, of not worshiping in god why does you, he have that there if he just wants your devout everything in life is black and white everything every single choice you make is black and white Okay. Plain and simple. Everything. If you don't do something, something else will take place. But there's tell nuance to life. Tell me, no, no. Tell me I'm wrong. That if, if no, it does cut and dry. You want to add nuance, but everything you don't do, you do. Oh, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I mean, you can say within choices, there's action and inaction, right? Right. Yeah, but that's cut doesn't mean and that dry. Life, that doesn't bam mean that life is black and white. It is completely black and white. It's all about no, no, choice. No. Our thoughts, our emotions, these are things that drive all us. about choice. have nuanced situations. So if somebody's trying to they kill have me, have influence over wrong? the cut and dry. They have influence over whether you pick a cut and dry decision. But there's not a difference between the two. It's a cut and dry. You're either taking or you're not taking something. You're doing or you're not doing something. Do you believe that you should? Your idea and your thought process of going through it might influence whether you do something or do something. That's the nuance. But you decide, bam, whether you do something or not. Absolutely. It's cut and dry. Again, choices, or when you think about this literally from like a scientific level, right? Action and inac inaction is black and white, but the choices we make in life, right? How we come to those choices, what we decide to do is absolutely not black and white. I didn't say uh, that was black and white. Never yeah, said that was but black that's, and white. No, I mean, more, there's more to life than just action, right? There's how you oh, feel, your experiences, your absolutely, right? Your perceived emotion, how you do things, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. Right, how you do things, yeah. But right. you still do yeah, it. You have you to go through it. with it. Absolutely, yeah. You can say the choices are action and action, absolutely. Completely. Right? What about you, why we make those choices? What about the morality? No one cares why because you end up doing it. Just like we say, you don't know why Christians do what they do. So it do won't you, matter why they didn't do it. So when you say that life is black and white, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that Very. there's a difference between killing somebody because you wanted them to die and it's killing still somebody in self defense? Still killing, right? What about killing somebody in self defense? But it's still death, right? It's still the removal of life. 
That's so cut if, and dry. So you the think decision, it, hold on, hold on. The decision I make to finally enact the act of death upon somebody mm -hmm. is very cut and dry. It happens. One, the person was alive, person no longer alive. Very cut and dry. Like I said, your logic leading up to that decision is where the nuance lies. You have these thought processes that you go through. You have this, this, this. But the act itself is cut and dry. That person was alive. The person is no longer alive. But they were going to kill me. It doesn't matter. The person it was doesn't alive. doesn't matter. No, because the person was alive and the person is no longer alive. That's but now I wouldn't be act. alive. If either I way, confirm. either way, the result was a very cut and dry result. So I he was alive. So he's I now just, dead. So I should just die because somebody's trying to kill no, me. No, I literally just said your thought process is the nuance. However, you got right. to where you exactly. got to decide. Mm -hmm. That's different than the decision making of it's done. Bam. He I'm is saying dead. That and thoughts and emotions, and all of that is a part of life. All so of you can't that. just say life is black and white. It is very right? cut and dry. Yes. No, because I we can. don't just we don't just experience okay, let's put it this way. Let's put our it. actions. We experience our lives through thought, Wait. through perception, right? Through conception, right? No, no, How, and, and is that is that do you have the choice to execute that or not? Yes. Okay. Is that not cut and dry? Whether I do or don't do, yes, it is. Okay. So if I decide not to contemplate something then, then that's cut and dry. Life is cut and dry. So again, you believe in consequentialism. No, but life is cut and dry. But, so you believe in consequentialism. It doesn't matter what You're I believe. Those are factual for heaven things. and hell. Those are pretty much factual stuff. So you want Absolutely. to equate the fact that life and death, or or heaven and hell, is so it's too, you know, it's a, a it's bad like relationship. You, it, yeah, but you want to say that, but then you don't want to put it again. You, it's like you trying no, to no, tell no, me. I, I, don't I, I say said, hell. I said, I said that when it comes to actions, actions are dichotomy. Right, actions. but you don't want to. You want to dog me about the hell aspect of it's very. You know, cut and dry hell or heaven. You either mm -hmm. worship me, and you know, it's not really a choice. Mm -hmm. It's it's coercion. Yep. Life is coercion. If I don't uh, work, I don't eat. If I don't get up, I'll sleep all day. I don't care what the motivations are. It's very cut and dry. Right. If I don't eat, I will die of starvation. Right. Right. So you so say is that is like... that bad of the natural earth to do to me? Should no, I not be that's... able to just lie in bed and be osmosisized into? Oh, give me food and I should be able to just suck it in? Shouldn't that be an option? Why is that not an option for natural man to do? Because people don't want to die and people don't want to go to hell. Yeah, but I'm saying, why it, didn't the earth just give me that option to, to feed? Why would I need to get up and work? It's not how biology works. Oh, and who, who decided that? Biology? Cells smashing together, I guess, right? Essentially, yeah. So you right? believe in the randomness of life? Yes. But when the randomness of life goes contrary and there's suffering... Why? How can you explain suffering then if you don't explain it to God? Well, how would you explain suffering? Because we don't all suffer, right? But I'm saying, oh, um, but oh, oh, we don't all suffer. Yeah, no. we do all suffer. No, 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 I mean that we don't all suffer at all times. You can kind of think of this as like, uh, um, there is a uh, doctor who has a saying called the worst suffering for all. Have you ever heard this term? Yes. Right, the worst suffering for all. Uh, if every single being in the universe was suffering the most that it ever could. Right. Mm -hmm. This we would call this the worst suffering for all. Right. right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that we don't all live within that state of the worst suffering for all, it must mean that anything less than the worst suffering for all is better than the worst suffering for all. Right. Which is the state that we exist in. Yes, we can suffer, but the universe well, is not made up of only this dichotomy where we're not all suffering the worst fate that we could ever have at all times. Well, why? Why what is suffering why? even part of the natural order of things anyway? Um, well, I mean, I guess it depends on what you think is suffering, right? Like, I could think that being hungry. Well, you is obviously suffering. have a very good idea of what suffering is because you said, "Why does God allow it?" So let's put right. it to five-year-old cancer situation, sure. okay? Absolutely. Why? Why? Yeah. Why is that? Why is that even taking place? Because remember, there is no God. We're going to go from your perspective. Sure. Now. We've yep. we've gone from mine. Mm -hmm. I've given you why I believe all this can take mm -hmm. place. Right. Why five-year-old with cancer? Is cancer cells build build up in the body, and the five year old gets cancer. So it. why should I feel bad then? Why should you feel bad? Is it your child? It doesn't matter. Why should I feel bad for any like the the cancer society for kids? They want me to donate money. Why should I don't? It's natural. You can die or die. Just hurry up and die. You're just taking up air. Why why should I care about humans? Depends on what you care about. It depends on whether or not you believe that utilitarianism is good, or whether or not you believe that your level of empathy. Uh, is equal to the amount of money that you can give away, right? If I had a hundred million dollars, I would donate to the cancer society. But if Why? I have ten dollars, I'm not going to give that away because I need it. 
That's why, because oh, I need so the money more than they do. So, so selfishness wins in your world. Everybody's selfish. Ah, everybody's selfish. Whether or not you want to admit it, every single person is selfish in some shape, form, or fashion. That selfishness doesn't necessarily have to be malignant, but we're all selfish. We all want to live. We <laughs> all want to preserve. This is just okay. an effect of biology. We want to survive, right? Because if we don't survive, we don't reproduce. And the point of any biological, somewhat conscious being. Um, or it's sentient in any way, even when you think about single cell organisms, is to reproduce and create more of yourself. That's just how mm -hmm. we're made. So a, a, any actions that go against making more of yourself, like starving yourself to death, um, is bad, right? Because our living beings are designed to make more of what they Now, are. is it is it bad or is it just anti-life? It's anti-life, I guess. You could say, oh, yeah. Right, I, I, right. Okay, so so when we use the words bad and good, uh -huh. we can I can say that like we, we often use words like bad and good in ways that are not moral, right? Like, oh, this food tastes bad. Or well, this food tastes good. There's nothing moral about that, right? It's just mm -hmm. we use good and bad, right? But when I say bad, um, in this case, like starving would be bad for me because it would end my life. That would be anti-life. Is it morally bad? No. But again, morality is a different uh, a different topic in relation to um so what would you consider suicide? What would I consider suicide? Yeah, good or bad. Um, bad. Why? You, are you asking me morally or in general? Oh, let's go with both. Sure. So uh, in general, uh, bad, because if I applied this concept universally and everybody killed themselves, then we would have no more people. Right. And if we had no more people, then we have no more concept of morality because nobody would be around to enact it. Yeah. To okay. enact it. Right. Um, so I would say that suicide is bad if you apply it universally. I would say that suicide is bad morally. Um, no, I wouldn't say suicide is bad morally. I would only say that it affects the people you love. Uh, so negatively, it's not bad way, morally. It could be selfish, but uh, for the person themselves, if they want. So let's say you kill yourself and you don't have any loved ones. Is it morally bad? Yeah. No, I don't think so. So the morality is only internalized. The morality is whether or not we as people are able to perceive that morality. If no people existed on this planet, there would be no people around. To but you can perceive, perceive the morality, morality of someone killing themselves, but you say it has nothing to do with morality. Because I'm around to perceive it. That's why. If, what? If, if, because I am around to perceive it as if I love them, that would be negative to me. Right. But that yeah, would be a biased not, thing. Do I think morally the, wrong? Well, I've already. No. I've already said it, that the action in and of itself of suicide, if you take away all other concepts of who's watching or who cares, is it morally wrong? No, I don't think suicide is morally wrong. I think suicide is a moral neutral. But murder is morally wrong. Yes, because you are now and you you are the one who is taking away the life of another person who wants to be alive. Would assisted uh, suicide be murder? What is assisted suicide? You ask me to kill you and I kill you. Mm, would that be murder in my eyes? Yeah. If I want to die and you mm -hmm. killed me, would that be morally wrong? Yeah. No. Why? Um, because you are fulfilling like so in this case, right? And when you murder somebody who doesn't want to die, they don't want to die. So taking away their life is morally wrong, right? You're killing somebody who wants to be alive, right? Mm -hmm. Which is murder, right? In this case, of assisted suicide, you're ending the life of somebody who already wants to die, right? You're going to make choices whether or not you can make them or not, right? Whether or mm -hmm. not you didn't have the other choice, right? If I don't kill the person, well, they're probably just going to kill themselves anyway. But if you ask me to do it and then I do it for you, do I think that that's morally wrong? No, because in this case, I don't, I wouldn't perceive that as murder. And I'm not talking, I'm not appealing to any type of legality. I know I, that in I, the United I get States, you. yeah, right. In the United States, like I, I, I wouldn't do that. Now, well, yeah, um, I'm not, I didn't mention law, but right yeah. now, whether or not I would want to do it, whether or not I would uh, feel bad about doing, especially if it was like a loved one, why I don't want to kill somebody who I loved, who wanted to die. No, of course not. I, why I wouldn't, wouldn't you? But that's what they Me? want. If because you love them, if you love them, you'd give them what they want. They want you to kill them. You but can't I'm, love somebody and then say, no, I'm not giving you what you want. That right. wouldn't be. You can't really say you love them then. Um, but I'm selfish. So. Oh, so you don't love them. Of course I love them. But just just within limits. It the, OK, so under what situation would this person want to die? It Is doesn't it matter. Depressed? They want to die. They just want to die. It doesn't they matter why. Die. They just want to die. It's right. not up to you as to why they want to die. Mm -hmm. They just ask you to do it. Right. You love them. It's your mm -hmm. wife. Right. I want to die. Right. And I want you to kill me. Why shouldn't you do it? And then why should you do it? Because I have emotions as a person, right? I love this person. I don't want to lose them. We mm -hmm. build connections with people who we have. We don't want to see them gone. 
Okay, then right? which is why, was... which is why I said this. I'm I'm being consistent here. I said if somebody kills themselves and they have loved ones, mm -hmm. they can perceive that as morally wrong because they feel the pain of losing that person. I this have is a the same for thing you. for assisted suicide. I have a wrench for you then. Sure. She says, "Kill me because I want to die, or I'll kill you, and then kill myself." So in this particular case, I would look at this from. Uh, so this is a very uh, interesting situation um and i do appreciate the thought experiment so kill me or i will kill you and then kill myself in this case somebody is going to die mm -hmm. right now yep. um either she chooses who's going to die if she chooses it's two people and if i choose one person dies mm -hmm. right so i would do the thing that leads to the least worst consequence which is kill her oh so but you love her absolutely you wouldn't want but to I be also with, love myself. You wouldn't want to be with her if you if she dies, you go to none of if that. She that. If she but if she wants to kill me, mm -hmm. she because wants she wants to, to die. Me. Yeah, because she wants to die and she'll take you with her. So she doesn't love me if she wants to kill me. Why? Because she wants to kill me. What if she what if in her and, and this goes back to what if in her nuance she decides, you know what, I've I've seen this life and it's mm -hmm. just getting worse. There's mm -hmm. nothing worth living for. I'm yep. going to kill myself. And mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything worth living without me in your right. world. So you should mm -hmm. kill yourself too by letting me kill you. Okay. Do you think that's true love? Like some Romeo and Juliet kind of thing? It's your definition of love. I oh, have a different definition not. of love. I have yeah. a different definition of love. So um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you what your version of love is. Absolutely. We're talking about the decision of cut and dry here. Mm -hmm. And the morality yes. of it. You see how I said there's a lot of nuance in this when it comes to emotion? Yeah, sure, the action may result in something, but there's still nuance in making the decision, right? Which is why you had to throw different caveats at me. Because under specific situations, under nuance, the morality of things can or can't change. Even if you make the action, in the end, every single scenario we've put forth results in a death of a person. Mm -hmm. Suicide, assisted suicide, um, assisted suicide under threat of murder, and self-defense was the first one we talked about. All of these result in the death of a person, but all of them uh, mm -hmm. we view as very different situations, or at least mm -hmm. I know I view them as very different situations, even if the end result is the same. That's why I say that there's, you can't say that there's no, uh, that life is black and white. But I say the, actions are. So but the, end re the end result is the same. In every single situation that we put forth, yes, somebody that, dies. Okay, good. And that's heaven and hell. What do you mean? In in every situation, the end result is the same. Someone dies. You mean just how is that heaven and hell though? Heaven and hell is the dichotomy, but you're saying that at the end someone dies, which is one thing. Yeah, and what did you say about the the precursor is what? Nuance. There you go. Right. That's the nuance is how you get is the end result, right? So you have someone's gonna die. Mm -hmm. That's the end result. Mm -hmm. And the end result in Christianity, in the world that we believe, is heaven or hell. That's two and, things, though. No, 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 not no. one thing. No, that is one thing. It's death. Heaven or hell is not death. Heaven or it hell is, is. It is. No, heaven or hell is you, the afterlife. Listen, life. listen, listen. Whether you killed her or she killed herself, we define it differently, did we not? Yes. One is called suicide and one is not. What's the end result? Death. Perfect. Heaven and hell. Suicide or killing. Either way, it's death. That's but why I said we don't it's view the same. heaven and hell as death. We view heaven and hell as afterlives. We view heaven and hell as right. an as an aftermath, right? Right. I am trying to tell you, you're titling it because you don't believe in God, mind right. you. That is correct. The only act analogy I can bring to you is your precursor. The only thing I can relate it to is my aftermath. Which is two things. Not one. Yours is two things, murder or suicide. No, death. Yes. It's all death. No, no, no. Death is what you okay. call your finality. Let's go That's back. what ours is. Let's go back and explain, right? You the are talking of... from two different sides of the equator is what I'm talking about. I cannot equate for you heaven and hell because you don't believe that. But I understand what it is. So... But you don't believe it. So it doesn't matter not. whether you understand it or not because you don't believe it. Which is it why doesn't, it doesn't make sense to you. No, it does matter, right? Because I think that you think that you have an understanding that I don't. We both fully understand what heaven and hell is. You just I'm not saying what it is. Right. We're not talking about what it is. It's exactly what you have a problem with why. Why? Why? Yes. So here's the thing, right? 
So the why, right? When we talk about our nuanced situations, all lead to one thing, and that's death. It doesn't matter how, right? They all lead to death. What does right. matter in the situation when you talk about the nuance is that they all lead to one result, right? You cannot say that heaven and hell is the equivalent to death because heaven and hell are not. I one didn't thing. say it was equivalent to death. You did. You said that. I no. didn't say that. No, you did. You said no, 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 no. I said heaven and hell would be equating to your suicide or murder. And you told me I couldn't do that. Okay, so let's go back to that then. So you're saying that suicide equates, I'm sorry, heaven or hell equates to suicide or murder. But the difference prior to that would be the choices you make to get there. Right. Right. So now this Same is Same thing becoming, with heaven and hell. No, because that's a semantical argument, right? You're How? Saying, it's a choice you make to get there. I don't no. see what the difference is. No, 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 because the both choices lead to death. Suicide and murder both lead to death. So it's one thing. If no, both death, it's one thing. Heaven and no. hell are two different things. No, they're not two. I don't. I don't think they're not two different things. I don't think you understand what I'm trying to say, right? So you think? So again, you can say suicide or murder. Those uh -huh. are just both semantical words that that both equal death. You're both mm -hmm. dead, right? So that's not the same as the nuance in life. Whether you choose to live your life in a way that allows you to go to heaven, or choose your life in a way that allows you to go to hell. That's how these so? are not the same things. How so? What's the what's the okay? I'll tell you how they're the same. What is the main deciding factor? That death isn't the deciding factor. No, no, no. What's the main deciding factor between those things? Whether or not you go to hell or uh, whether it's uh whether, whether it's or murder or suicide versus heaven or hell. What what's the main deciding factor? Heaven or hell, murder, suicide. Deciding factor. I'm, I'm confused by your question. I don't Choice. understand. Choice. So if Either I'm way. murdered, Either okay, way. so you say, so if I'm murdered, I didn't choose to die. If I committed suicide, I chose to die. Yes. If I go to heaven, I chose to go to hell. But if I go to hell, I didn't choose to go to hell. I just chose not to worship God. Exactly. No. It's choice. That's not, no, not at all. It is right? choice. Um, that's Did you like, have the option? Hold on. Did you have the option to follow God when you were alive? Yes. Okay. Did you? No. Okay. What happens? You go to hell. Okay. Did you have the option to kill yourself or not? Yes. Did you? Yes. Okay. Did someone have the choice to kill you or not? Yes. Did they? Yes. Okay. What's the but end I result? I didn't have the choice to die in that result. What's it's the death. end result? Death. Or suicide what's... or murder. I just and what's the precursor? Right? Whether or not I had choice. What's the choice? Choice, right? That's, the, so that's the, the similarity. But this is, this, here's the thing, right? And this is the, the problem with your analogy, mm -hmm. right? Is that in one case, mm -hmm. you have a person who is a moral agent, mm -hmm. which is the murderer. They're a moral agent, a negative moral agent, right? Mm -hmm. They kill me. Yes. In my case of suicide, there is no moral agent. It's you just are. me. No. You are the moral agent. No, because it's not moral. You, you don't have I mean, morality when you do it? It doesn't matter, right? I'm saying that I now, am not that moral is, Now, that, that is the first honest statement you said all day. What do you mean? That is the very first one you said. I already all said day. that I believe the suicide is no, a moral no, no, illusion. no, no, not that, not that. What? Not that. You just told everybody where your moral compass is. What do you mean? Your moral compass doesn't come from anything innate, anything outside. It's not something that all humans possess. Your moral compass or your morality is not morality at all. It's called selfishness. What do you mean? Um, how is self preservation suicide? above all else self that's, that's above how, all else that is selfishness that is that's, selfishness so that's everybody, not morality everybody that's not morality i disagree I well why, no i'll tell you why it's not morality because when you try to tell me i shouldn't kill somebody else right but when you feel selfish you'll do it that's not morality that is a lack of that's it is it is morality it's no bad. yes it is no so morality isn't just things that are good you can have yes, negative it morality. is an equation between the right and wrong, right? Right. So right. is there something morally right about letting somebody live and morally wrong? Absolutely. Okay. So where do you get your compass from? from. Your selfishness. You don't get it from anything else but yourself. That's no, selfishness. I don't. No, yes. I don't. You no, just I don't. said it. You can't tell me where I get my morals You literally from. just said it, though. I'm not telling what, you. You literally just said I it. What did I say specifically that gave you that impression? Whatever you wanted to do. Whatever I want to if do. If it's not, yes, this is exactly your word. What do you mean? Suicide you, or? Either way. Wait, wait, me not way, wanting to die? 
is selfish. morally you selfish? It. You said it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You did think he somebody say, not wanting not to say, die? Did he not say he doesn't want to die because, yes, it's selfish? Did, did you not selfish? say that? What you are you said talking that. about? You said well, you well, well, not hold wanting hold on, to die on. is I, not I, selfish. I think, I think you're starting to misrepresent my position here, right? No, so, no, 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 no. Yes, no. yes, 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 right? So hold ask, on. Ask the people in the audience. They if you're going to misrepresent my position, I have to defend it, right? Okay, go ahead. You said that the issue with being murdered and suicide is choice, right? Whether or not you choose to. If somebody murders me, I don't have a choice in that, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to die because I don't want to die. That's right. You can call it selfish if you want, but I don't think that's a that's something that we no, nobody here or in chat would say that they want to be killed by somebody. Nobody wants it to happen to them. If you want to say that that's selfish, then you can die on that hill if you want to, right? Now, if I want to die because I think that my life is miserable, that is a choice that I make. To me, there's no morality in it. You're just That's killing yourself because you don't want to be alive. Because you don't, because you feel like the prospect of death or the 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 lack of existence is preferable to existing. That has nothing to do with selfishness, mm -hmm. right? It's it's because you don't want to suffer. It's it's not an no. express of selfishness. It is a lack of happiness that allows people to commit suicide. You so I'm not said. saying that. Uh, no, I'm not no, saying you. You said you said you wouldn't help the person commit suicide because you don't want to hurt. And you because, said that was selfish of you, and you have to be selfish because you don't want to do something. Right, because I would see other options. I would look at, you know, maybe we can get you therapy. Maybe we can do other things, right? Like, it, again, there's a lot of nuance in life that we can't ignore. You it's can put selfish. this into a, Of course it can come from a... Right. But, not, but not all selfishness is morally negative. Yes, all of it is. No, it's not. Yeah. No, I disagree. Not selfishness all selfishness is Selfishness in negative. and of itself is indeed morally wrong wrong that is absolutely false right if i want somebody to live because i want them to be alive in my life right or if i save somebody i'm not even talking about somebody who wants to die right if i push somebody out of uh, out of the way of of a uh, um, of a moving car because i love them right with less of a regard for myself well, that would be selflessness right but let's say i didn't want them to die so i push them out the way right um because i don't i don't want to lose this person that's not a morally negative thing to do but that's not i don't think selfish. anybody would say that that's not being selfish because you put yourself in the way. But I may not make that decision. No, absolutely, it would be selfish because if it was a loved one who I would never think twice of doing, or if it was somebody out on the street, I would definitely be like, uh, So you think not. selfish is only linked to the people you love? You can be more selfish to the people you love. Oh, no, it's, no, that's not the question. This is though. how life operates. Absolutely. No, 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 I, no because I, I, I'm not engaging in the question because I don't think you can only be selfish to the people you love, right? You can be selfish to others, but primarily we are selfish to the things that we hold dear. And there's nothing why, wrong with why is it bad to be selfish then? I'm going to go on a... It's I'm bad to be selfish. It's bad to be selfish when your selfishness allows other people to suffer. But That's why? when I think that it's... But why? Because other people are suffering because of your selfishness. If you have the ability to help others, I think that uh, you, especially if you're not putting yourself in danger and there's no harm to you, then you shouldn't be selfish. If I have tons and tons and tons of money, personally, I think, if, if I did, I would be giving that money away because but I don't why? need... What do you mean, but why? Because of reciprocity, because of altruism, because I believe that that is the right thing. But well, that's what that you that believe, but why yeah. should I? Why should you? You don't have to. You can make whatever choice you want to. But that's not true, because if I don't, I get ostracized by, by people who? like you. What do you mean? If you don't Take if you first, had millions okay, of dollars? This is perfect. Yes, this is perfect. Exactly. Sure. This is perfect. Mm -hmm. Let's go to BLM. Sure. If I decide that it's a trash organization, in my mind, it's trash. Sure. What is then your view of me for saying that? I would have to ask you a lot of different questions on why you believe that. No, no, or... no. What's your view of me? If I, and I'm just, okay, I'll give you. Again, I'll give you so you don't have nuance, to ask the question. No, nuance. I'll give you so you don't have to ask any precursor. Sure. I hate BLM, and I don't care why you don't. The, the, uh, why you or, or no? I hate BLM, and it doesn't matter what you tell me. I'm going to hate BLM. What's your view of me? So, are we talking about the Black Lives Matter global all of it, the Network Black Lives the movement, the statement, the organization, all of it? If I say I sure. hate BLM, mm -hmm. bam, and there's nothing you can say to convince me, what's your view of me? I would ask you, why do you hate it? Cause, why, what's your view of me? I can't have a view of you if I don't have an opinion. If I don't know why you hate it, I don't do that. I don't it's just make trash. general overall judgments. Okay. What's why? your view of me? I, I can't make a statement on that. I would have to know why. 
Contrary to popular belief, I don't just go around putting people into boxes because they have a general worldview. Okay, I would ask me, you why. And if you could justify that, then maybe I would... Um, no, I have I justified it before, and it's, it's never been accepted as justification. Okay. So again, I can't make that claim okay just i'll help you because, i'll make sure. sure i'll give you an exact answer sure. so there's no more questions or nuances to it right mind you the following statements may or may not express exactly what i believe about the term blm okay that's my precursor sure nothing they do helps all they do is back criminals they only back really anything for lgbtq they have done nothing for black people whatsoever, and they only show up around the election. Okay. I will tell you that that information is false. How? So I would say that your uh, hatred for BLM or thinking that it's trash is based on ignorance because you have not done enough research to find out, one, what they have done uh -huh. for the black community. Um, two, uh, that uh, when it comes to the LGBTQ, that is intersectionality. It's because mm -hmm. when you have multiple parties who uh, know what oppression is, those people can find a common ground within those things. Mm -hmm. um, and three, what was the other thing you said? That they support criminals? Mm -hmm. And they show up every four years. And they show up every four years also, which is not true. So yeah. they don't show up every four years. It's absolutely not true. Uh, when it comes to support of criminals, we didn't pick like George Floyd. Um, uh, we believe that somebody not complying with the police shouldn't mm -hmm. mean that police should have the right to execute people. Um, if you do believe that, again, if that's the hill you want to die on, I don't know what to tell you. So I would say that your belief that Black Lives Matter is trash is absolutely based in um, evidence that is completely false. So um, I would say that that okay. is ignorance. I would say that okay. your view of hating Black Lives Matter is ignorance. Okay. So, so, and then I tell you, I have done my research by both looking at the website mm -hmm. and looking at multiple news sources and experiencing protests myself. That's why I came to the conclusion. Then what? I would tell you that the information you looked up is, or I would say that you're either lying, right? Or the information mm -hmm. that you deduced, um, you were not able to deduce properly because you didn't look into the proper sources. You looked into uh -huh. sources under your okay. own biased view. Um, and uh, if you say you've gone to protest, how do those protests turn out? Okay. Oh, it doesn't matter how the protests turn out. This it is does matter. No, no, not really, because I'm, I'm it's a protest. I mean, it's peaceful. Okay. It so did, did, did you not like the protest? It, it was okay. I mean, we okay. shouted, so, we shouted so, a couple of times and, you know. So why would that, why would that, uh, why would that, why would you not like because that? Because nothing got you? done. It didn't what do you mean nothing got done? Do you know how uh, grassroots organizations function? Yeah, yeah I do. But that's not, not, this is right? all hypothetical, remember, right? This right. is all hypothetical. Okay. I told you before, at the beginning, this does or may, right, may right. or may not okay. espouse my, okay? So right. don't, try and, push, don't right. try and push to get an answer of my belief system because right. this is not, you don't know if this is my belief system. Okay, I'm okay. Giving so, you a hypothetical. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that to this hypothetical person that uh, if they went protesting and believe that nothing happened, then they don't understand how grassroots organizations work and they don't understand how protests work. Okay. I would say. Now we're out of the hypothetical. Sure. You have the exact same stance as any Christian would have. That I don't know enough about it. No, no, no. You, you honestly, I'm looking at what you just did when I presented my argument. Mm -hmm. You did exactly what Christians would do to an argument presented by someone who wasn't. How so? You don't have all the facts. You don't understand how it works. You don't know what you're talking about. All of the information you have is wrong or you didn't dig deep enough. All of those things you just did to me mm -hmm. because I didn't believe in BLM, mm -hmm. Christians do. And you have a problem when a Christian does that. Meanwhile, you just did the exact same thing to me because I don't believe in BLM. Because I have evidence that backs I do up. too. No, I have factual evidence, not I just do a too. book that says so. I don't think you do, right? I have actual evidence. I don't evidence. think you have factual evidence because I have things that can contrary to. I have I have evidence that's contrary to what you believe for BLM. Right. So when it comes that to BLM, I can present to you. So I have evidence one on how grassroots organizations work. I do too. I have evidence on uh, statistical data on how uh, uh, protests work, right, and how those lead to change. And I have I evidence too. of actual changes in the black community. I have actual I, uh -huh. uh, of how BLM has actually had laws changed, right, right? um, uh, in, in 
systems that are like things like uh, uh -huh. the police, right? Uh -huh. Um, I have actual evidence. To I have actual policy. evidence. What of, you of, have, you of have miracles. A, you have a book. I have evidence of miracles. Your own anecdotal evidence. I have no, empirical no, evidence. No, I have people. I have people. Anecdotal. Not anecdotal. It Documented anecdotal. by doctors. By doctors. Documented by doctors. Like what, for example? Cancer. What about it? Removal. The removal of cancer. Without surgery. Without surgery. It's Stage just, four. They just... It just gone. They just beat it. I would love to see it. It's this. just gone. Oh, you, this... you do. Now, now, hey, hey, if you really want to see this, mm. because it exists, mm. and I'm not the only one, I'm betting mm -hmm. you right now, mm -hmm. there are at least five people in the audience right now that have, have seen that firsthand, not just with cancer. I would, I would love to see So for it. you to tell Absolutely. me, no, no, but for you to tell I've, me. I've heard stories of miracles, obviously, even in the modern but day. But you can't tell me just because mm -hmm. you didn't see it. Just like you tell me, I don't know what grassroots and I don't see the changes happening. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me the same way I can't tell you about BLM that what I experienced is untrue. I am literally telling you everything from the beginning of this conversation. When I put this BLM situation to you, everything you said in the exact way you did it is the same problem you have with how Christians approach Christianity. Not at all. You Exact same words, bro. Not Exa at all. Like literally no. the exact same, verbatim. I say those words because I have empirical data to back up those words. I do too. I don't think you do. I don't think any Christian does. But just because you think I don't does not mean I don't. I'm more than happy to be shown. I have in my own life, just That's mine. Anecdotal. Even, not, it's anecdotal. That, so... If I prove to you that's still anecdotal, really? Yes. No, no, wow. no, no, no. Can you prove wow. it to me? That's no. amazing. Hold that's on, hold amazing. On. That, I, that's amazing. I, hold on. I heard your question backwards. Um, if you can prove it to me, is it anecdotal? No, not if you can prove it to me. Um, then that's different. But you're still giving me an anecdotal experience. And until you can do wow. that, like you, you do you would you really sit here and try to validate an anecdotal um uh the anecdotal nature of God as proof of God's existence? I um, can prove meanwhile, to you I that have empirical data on the things that black lives matter has done it can prove I, that no, nothing nothing that i said was based on my experiences you never heard me say i went to a protest and i saw that it worked and i did this and i saw that it worked so you take taking everybody you else's word for it no i have empirical data but you didn't do it but you didn't do it it doesn't matter i know how to read oh oh but you've never had any of that stuff happen in front of you you just so, believe hold it. on wait a minute you mean to tell me that if i look up a law that was put into place because black lives matter protested for it that that's not empirical data it doesn't mean that it's actually being enacted yeah because you yes, don't it see is. it enacted because it's in it. the law wait, books show me oh oh it, it, so it's in the law books which means it's mm -hmm. taking place yes it means, oh. means that you can be violated for breaking those laws it doesn't mean Every that nobody's not going to break books is taking place absolutely right which is the reason why yeah this, so what the argument? I guess you, you, you're, you you're can believing try to make in a it, book. Right? Then you're believing in a book. No, I'm believing in law, which is things that we have. Laws enforce or protect mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. We have rights. Laws are used as the enforcement. Look, of I understand that you have to keep it. I know you have to keep it. But I'm telling you right now, everything you're doing right now, everything, everything you're doing right now is what Christians do. No, I have empirical yeah. data. You do not. That's what Christians say. Because they have confirmation bias. But that's what Christians say. I'm saying everything bias. you're doing right now is what Christians do. What makes bias. yours better than Christians? Because I have no confirmation bias. I don't care don't. about how I feel about it. I care about the empirical data. I care about what is factual. I care about what can be shown, what can be mm. proven, and what can be observed. I okay, do not let me care ask about you, people's let me ask anecdotal empirical. experiences that, oh, I felt the spirit of God and he spoke to me. That doesn't mean anything to okay, me. No, no, I didn't, not I didn't even mention that. Not, I'm not, not saying you. I'm, I'm, saying just in, I'm just giving a general example. Okay, so here, let me ask you a question then. Which has killed more people, police or gangs? Police or gangs, I don't know because I don't have that information in front of me. Well, okay, let's put it this way. Which has killed more black people, police or gangs? Probably gangs. So which one's been, in your opinion, by how much? By a lot. Well, well give me a number. You don't have that number? You don't have that number in your head? Why wouldn't you have that number in your head? Because I can't retain all the information I've ever looked up. At all okay, times. but it's empirical that it'll be more, right? Sure, yes. And exponentially more. Exponentially, yes. So if it's exponentially more, I would say probably about a hundred to one. Right. Sure. We could say a hundred to one. We could say a thousand to one. Doesn't matter. 
Well, it might be and it does because empirical. I'm, you know, going. Yeah, up yeah. We can say 101, a thousand to one. I'm saying that how much more it is. I know that it's exponentially more than uh, police killing uh, people, than mm-hmm. gang members killing other. Black which people. is more important to look at then? What do you mean? Which is more important to look at? They're both equally important. Not really. Yes, really. Okay, so you're telling me that an ant bite is just as dangerous as cancer? Of course not. That's ridiculous. What? Well, well, that, that's the difference. No, it's not. Yeah. No. They're both societal issues that need to be addressed. Uh, has an ant bite ever killed anybody? Of course not. It has. Actually, You're making has. a false equivalency. No. Has an ant bite ever killed anybody? D- sure. If you're okay. Saying, yeah, sure. Exponentially, but exponentially, cancer has killed more. Yes. Cancer is more of a danger than an ant bite. Yes. Gang war and death is way more important to look at than police killings. So you're drawing a false equivalency to something so? that may... Because poisonous ants don't live everywhere in the world, um, and then they can't—they're not going to kill everybody unless they're allergic to them specifically, right? That, that's not um, true. But okay. Yes, it is. No. There are no. There, what? What ant do you believe is poisonous? Uh, it's not a matter humans? of poison. Yes, it is. You, it, no, it's not even a matter of poison. Why, then why would somebody die from an ant bite? Because if you get multiple of them. So if you get a lot of ant bites, you don't die from you die from but it's an ant lots bite. of poison. But it's an ant bite on no. one person. So wait, are you are you are you equivocating? I didn't one say ant one ant. Being... I didn't say one ant. I did that not. Would, say that would have been nice ant. to know. That would have been nice to know. But I didn't say one ant. I said ant bites. Is yeah anything anything that's too much of something can kill you. If I get stung by too many hornets, I'm gonna die. If I get stung by too many. But bees, how I'm often do the hornets that happen? Is my question. That's a ridiculous thing, though. How? You're, because you're drawing a false equivalency, right? Okay, because, it's not because, false equivalency. Okay, because let's put an, it ant, an ant bites you out of instinct. It doesn't do it because it has any malicious intent. It doesn't do, you, do it because it has choice. That has it nothing to do with the case. Because pe- Yes, it does. It has it nothing to do with the case. Cops who kill black people. Often, how often does that happen? It doesn't matter how often it happens. It, it does shouldn't too. happen at all. It no, does it doesn't. Too. It no, does too. because so here's the thing, right? If you're comparing the death of George Floyd, it doesn't matter why it happened. Is that what I you don't said? Know it doesn't happen to why? It doesn't matter why it happened. No, no, happened? no. No, I said that it does matter why it happens as equivalent to an ant bite and like Derek Siobhan leaning on George uh, um on George Floyd's neck for nine minutes. There is a major difference here. The answer so doesn't nuance, have any nuances agency. in that don't matter, then, right? Nuances in that one don't matter. I'm telling you, the nuance does matter. This well, is so exactly what's the nuance in the George Floyd death? What's the nuance in the George Floyd death? That uh, Derek Siobhan was a conscious person, a person with agency, uh-huh. with moral agency, who right. had the ability to make decisions, who had mm-hmm. the ability to stop his decisions, and mm-hmm. it bites you out of instinct. It's one, it's done, it's yeah, over. Oh, 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 oh. Did, did, did somebody kick the ant nest? It doesn't matter. That's oh, not, this is a false it equivalency. Doesn't matter if someone kicks the ant's nest; it just matters of that the course, ants bite. If yes, of course, if, if you kick an ant's nest, the ants are going to come out and attack you. And whether or not you die is whether or not how many ants bite you, right? This this is a. I'm matter glad of you're saying that because quantity. I fully agree with you. The ants don't have a choice. Hmm. Ants don't have ants don't make conscious decisions. They do things based on instinct. Humans do not. We don't get this, right? We Nobody's don't get that. We don't get instinct. There's, so there's minute, no... hold on, hold on. So if a bunch of ants like swore me and murdered me because I kicked their ants' nest. Do we gather up all the ants and send them to jail? People do that. Yeah, they just do they we, we gather up the ants the and send them to jail? They relocate the nest. But to get them I mean, away from people so that they don't die, right? But we don't punish the ants. Right? That, We're not that punishing is punishment. The ants. No, it's not. Because you moved them from where they were. They were happy. It doesn't matter. They can, they, the they're not happy. Ants don't feel happiness. You kicked the nest. No, they don't know the difference between one area and the other. But we're happy. not talking about the nature of ants. We're talking about the activity. You want no, to equate not. We're the talking nature. about the nature of people and their actions. No, right? if, I have never brought that into the question we're at talking all. Talking about causality versus culpability. No, you're bringing in culpability. I'm not bringing and that in at all. Yes, which you no. should. You no, need you to can't. bring in culpability. No, no, you can't. Why not? You don't think because we're not talking about culpable? that right now. No, no, that's in the, none of that was in the, the question. This is what we're talking about. You're no, to compare... I am literally asking. We're not comparing anything to anything. I'm literally asking you, you which happens person. more. You told me which happens more. happens more. So when I ask you which happens more, and you're not right. focusing on the fact that that happens more, but you're focusing on the one that happens less Doesn't because matter. of who's involved, yes. that makes no sense. Correct, because cops have an obligation to protect people. Gang members do not. So they're allowed to do that? No, they're not allowed to do that. <laughs> allowed by who? Wow. Who is allowing this? Wow. Who's allowing this? Cops, right, have a legal obligation, right, 
to protect people. So do right? people. This people have a legal view. obligation no, not to kill people. Le people yes, have, have a legal obligation not to murder. That's legally obligated to not murder. Correct. Gang right. members legally go, they have the legal obligation not to murder, but they Correct. do it. Just like everybody else, right? Unlike so why cops, are they not held to the same standard as cops who kill one or five a year? Because cops have a job to protect. A cop's job is to prevent death. A gang member's job is That's not, not to prevent death. That's not their job. That yes, is not is. their job. Is not okay. to prevent so, death. Okay, so their job is to not kill people. That is not cop. even their Especially. job either. So, so, so what is a cop's job then? Please inform me. Enforce Serve and protect, the law. Right? Serve and protect. And to preserve Serve the law. and protect. And to preserve the law. Do not do ignore do that at all. Preserving the law. Anything is allowable to preserve the law. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. So you mean yeah. you mean to tell me that you believe that cops can kill people yeah. for like stealing something? Is, is that part of preserving the law from stealing? Yes. Okay, so let me ask you if they stole a car and took off with it and he got shot in the car. No, that's not what I'm talking about. You think what? that if somebody steals, because right, we're not talking about the level of stealing. You think if somebody steals a candy oh, now bar, you don't want to go into the nuances of it. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. If somebody steals First a candy bar, you think, behavior, but you, you think, won't think, go into the behavior no, no, of stealing? No, no. That's you weird. You agree with God. You think you just said, right, that they are allowed to uh, to uh, serve the law or preserve the law at any cost. So I asked you, do you think it's okay that if somebody steals a candy bar at any cost to preserve the law, should they kill that person? If the law answer says, if you steal, you die, yeah. You think that somebody should be murdered for if the law a candy says bar? if the law says it's it. not what the law says. I didn't the say the law said. I did not law. say. Okay, okay. So why are you you using I a hypothetical say, compared to fact facts? I didn't say the law said so. You presented to me something about stealing that you know has nothing you to do. You said with at any cost. You said at any cost. That was Preserve your words. the law at any cost and whatever the law says. You said at if any cost. If the law cost. for stealing does not equate to killing, obviously it don't kill if it's stealing is so not part you, of the law. So do you think that resisting arrest is punishable by death? It depends on the uh, resist that you're doing, obviously. So do you think that, res again, do you think that resisting arrest is punishable by death? Yes I think no? if you resist arrest to the point where you put other people's life in danger, you should die. Yes. That's No, no. Do you think that resisting arrest should be punishable by death? It depends. Yes, no. no. We it have. Depends. Do you know how many, do you know how it many depends. crimes, do you know how many crimes currently in the United States are punishable by death? Yeah, a few of them. But what does that have to do 42. with the conversation that happened now? There are 42 crimes that are punishable by death under the United States. Hold on. Oh, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Punishable by death at the execution of a cop or by law after the jury has made the decision? Always due process. What do you mean? Okay, then we're not talking, but you're implementing that. A cop killing somebody isn't due process. But you are talking about a place outside of that. So you can't give me the 42 no, instances. No, You can't. No, you can't. because everybody must follow these laws. If, no, 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 because if a cop shows up to a standoff with a man holding a gun to a woman's head, you can't wait for due process to execute that man. Absolutely. Then you right? can't give me 42 cases no. that have to do with the case law, but that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. So here's the thing. Things like aggravated murder and stuff like that, which in your case that would be, is punishable by death. So I am being consistent. No, because you just said after the jury has had due process. That's what you said. Those 42 cases were due process. You told me that. If we're talking about inter you, crimes you that are punishable... Just said it. Then tell me that's not what you meant because that's what you said. So, for example, oh, so uh, I guess I need to be a little more specific. If there is a crime that is punishable by death in the United States, right, and there is a cop, and these are like very extreme aggravated crimes. I'm talking about like bioterrorism, terrorism, right, um, um, uh, possession of like like explosives, stuff like that, right. Those things are like punishable by death, right. Mm -hmm. If anybody witnesses those crimes, especially a cop, right, it is their duty to execute that person because those crimes are punishable by death. The thing that is not punishable by death under these is resisting arrest. It's not punishable okay. by death in any instance ever, whether or not they're doing it. So, now, if if the causing of resisting arrest leads up to aggravating circumstances like driving a car and ramming it through five people, that is no longer just resisting arrest. That that is other so holding a gun, that the holding a gun, holding a gun that belonged to an officer, mm -hmm. pulling it from him. Mm -hmm. That's that's not grounds for. That's, that's self but that's not what happened with Derek Chauvin. That's not what happened but we're with not talking Tamir with Rice. That's not what happened with uh, Eric Brown. That's not what happened with Philando Castile. So, like, oh, it didn't happen with Philando Castile. Why? So, because you're trying to no, not at all. You're trying to use like the lowest common denominator, right? No, I'm argument, not. Which you, I'm you not. are. You're saying I'm that not. if somebody pulls a gun off a cop, of course the cops should be able to shoot them. You brought this whole thing. Listen, listen. You brought 
all of the fields into the situation I, I, I proposed to you. I okay. originally told you mm -hmm. that if one situation yields more death than the other, why is it that the one with the least amount of death is getting the most airtime? Because it's not about the amount of death. You're looking at the wrong fact. So you don't mind that there's a large amount of death in one situation. It's a matter of the situation behind the small death that matters. So it doesn't matter about the amount of life lost. It's the reason behind the small life lost. It is not about the loss of life in general. It is about... Oh. Okay, hold on. That let's, makes let's, you know that I can that I can believe. It's not about, about the loss of life in general. It is about whether or not about people are punished or not, right? And the gangs justice. are not punished. The gangs are not punished. So that makes a lot of sense what to me why the BLM is they're not, punished. Punished. not if, because no. they're still killing people at an exponential rate. Who's doing if the they were punished, if they were punished at the rate they were killing people, the rate would be going down. It's going so, up. So, um, when gang stitches members get stitches, so sure. So when gang members commit crimes, right? They have well, same thing with cops. They have the same laws. Cops are part of a gang, by the way. Um, they okay. have the same laws that gangs have, right? Snitches get stitches. You're not about to like tell another cops. The, okay, the, the, you're going the into a whole different field. We're talking about something right? very specific. Okay, stay on top. So, uh, a gang member commits a crime, right? Mm -hmm. He gets caught by the cops. He goes to jail. Justice. A cop really? kills somebody. That's how it happens. I'm. I'm. Saying and you tell me, I don't know how grassroots on the ground hold goes. On, hold on. I'm saying that in a situation where it does happen, right? If somebody kill, if somebody commits a crime, they get caught. If they get caught, they go to jail. For did murder, Chauvin go to jail? Right. I'm sorry. Did Chauvin go to jail? Yes. Did he get? Did he get punished? Yes. Okay. That's What's one example. Point? We had to. We literally had to riot for that to happen. You didn't have to riot because you didn't yes. even wait. What do you he mean? Got he got arrested wait? the day after. What no. are you talking about? False. Five days. Okay. Five days. Five days after. All right. Uh, I believe George Floyd was killed on the 23rd. He wasn't arrested until like the 28th or the 27th. Ooh, ooh, ooh five days. Derek okay. Chauvin, right? Yes. Okay. And so wait a minute. If I kill somebody and somebody filled me on camera killing somebody, you mean to tell me that? Yeah, it they did. It took two weeks to for them me? to find the guy that shot the cops in the car. What's your point? To find them. Derek Chauvin is a cop, but we know he lives. He was That's on film. Point. Yes, exactly. Who? Who was on film? The guy that shot the two cops and in the car. Did he hide? Did he hide? Did he what run? So it matters. Wow. Was he, was he chilling in his house? Was he chilling wow. in his house just waiting to be arrested? Because I'm pretty sure that's the first place they would have gone to. These are these are not the same. And you know that this is How a is it not argument. Because we know... Did, Literally two cops sitting in their car why, doing nothing. Hold on. Take, two cops sitting why, in the car doing nothing got shot. A call was made for George Floyd for the cops to show up. Massive difference. The cops were called to be there. That Negro wasn't called to show up at the cops' car to shoot them. Come on now. What, but what do you, it, that doesn't even matter. What it you does matter about? because no, the doesn't. cops were supposed to be there. No, okay. So it, the cops were there. They killed George Floyd, right? They were there. Um, They're the ones who did it, which is the problem. And then it took five days to arrest somebody who we know where they live. And we literally saw them murder somebody on camera. At Imagine I murdered can... somebody on camera and I was chilling at home and it took them five wow. days to arrest me. If I if I was kneeling on, uh, on Derek Chauvin's neck, for nine minutes, they and they knew who I was and they knew where I lived. I would have been arrested within hours. Within that's not hours. true. That is yes, not it true. Is. And you know that is not true. It, it wouldn't have taken five days. And I you know, know that's you not know true. that's not true. It wouldn't have taken five days. How much you want to bet it would have taken more? Have they caught the I shooters for the little girl in the McDonald's parking lot? Yes. Well, how long did the it take? How, how long did it take? They had to find them. How they long know did it where take? Derek Chavon lives. Oh my god. How months. long did they take? Months. Here you go. It took months. That's not the, that's not the same though. They had to find them. They had to get the camera footage. They had to. They don't. These like Derek Chavon. Because that right? was an obvious state of murder. If you don't know where, if you don't know who somebody is, that was is, an obvious if case. If you don't of know murder. who somebody is, you have to. There's a process when it comes to identifying them. Derek Chavon has his name on his badge. He has his address and his police records. How I don't understand how you tra even try because to it was not an case. obvious case of murder. Yes, it was. He literally to you, to you, to wait a minute. Take off Derek. Take off Derek Chavon's badge, his police uniform. You mean take as off the reason fact, why he was there? You mean no, take no, no, off the no, reason no, why no, no. he was there? As a matter, no, no, no. Oh, as please, man. Fact, come on. Now you want to remove fact, the context and the yes, nuance? Yes, now put, you want to get rid of put, nuance? Put me and you in that situation, and somebody filmed me. Or no, put you. I'll put. I'll put you on my neck, right? Let's say you're you were filmed kneeling on my neck for nine minutes. Do you think that anybody would question whether and I died? Do you think anybody would question whether or not that was murder? Do you think for a minute that you can take away the nuance now that you put the nuance into the case? It was a public execution, literally, like somebody said. Public execution. Wow. It was a public execution. The fact that the fact that you don't you if you think 
that there is, even after he's been convicted, that you say that, oh, they weren't sure whether or not it was murder is ridiculous. The amount of energy you guys put into defending killer cops, this is why black. Who is matter. defending Chauvin? You are. You said that he was he was put there. Um, it wasn't it wasn't an obvious case of Where murder. in this situation did I no, 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 stop, stop, murder. stop, stop. Where in this did I say anyway. I didn't blame Chauvin? I'm sorry if I misspoke. Do you blame Chauvin? He got arrested for the right reasons. Do you blame him? Why would I blame him for being there? For murdering George Floyd. He got arrested and he was put to prison for murdering George Floyd. Do you think that Derek Chauvin murdered George I don't George think Floyd? he murdered George Floyd. I think he contributed so to George Floyd's himself. death. Wow. Ridiculous. So you are defending him then? Because you would make the Why point. Would I, how am I defending him? You defend... You don't think that he got so, jail time for his part in George Floyd's death. It doesn't matter. I'm not asking the courts. I'm asking you. And you think that he didn't murder George Floyd. No, I don't you, think he murdered George Floyd. So you would have to have a defense for why he didn't, which would be defending him. How is that defending him? Because you would have a defense. I'm not against... defending the fact that he killed anybody. Oh, that's, I this makes so much sense. Right. So it's very obvious that you have a difficult time looking at empirical data. Oh, do I? Yes. You would rather put your own nuance into it and believe that as fact. Like you do with God? No, I don't put any nuance into God. There's you totally a lack of put your own data. nuance on God. No, there's a lack of... You literally of, start no. the whole thing about I'm how other about Christians empirical, talk and how other I'm Christians about do. about empirical data, right? According you to all facts... You don't have empirical data according, because you weren't there. According to all facts, right? This is the reason why when it comes to... Um, uh, it doesn't matter, right? Was George Floyd was George Floyd uh, on any drug at all? Doesn't matter. That that's oh, absolutely that doesn't relevant. matter. His autopsy report shows that he did not die from fentanyl, so that's not even. I, again, did I even mention is, fentanyl? Did I mention? You said was he on drugs? What I already know the talking point. Did I mention point. fentanyl? You know my Nolan, talking I, point. Stop gaslighting me. You I know my know talking, talking point? point. What's your talking point? I'm asking a simple question. Was he high at the time? Yes, he was high at the time. Would that have contributed in any way to his behavior? Sure. Perfect. So how can you 100% contribute his death to what the officer did? Was Derek Chauvin high? No. So he's he's the moral agent. What are you talking about? How does that have to do with George But Floyd? there's no morality. So how do you have a moral agent? What do you mean? He's acting based on what was given. No. There was he resistance. murdered somebody. No, he, he didn't. Murdered, he murdered no, he somebody. Didn't. No, he he didn't. murdered that man. So take off the badge. Take off George Floyd. Put any other two people in. You mean to tell me that you wouldn't view that as a murder? Because they weren't there for a reason. So hold on. So let's let's get this straight. It doesn't matter why he was there. He yeah, it does George actually. Floyd. It, it doesn't does matter the reason matter. why they showed up. Yes, it does. Wow. If, if a cop if a cop calls cops have been called. So you mean to tell me that if a cop calls somebody to come to a situation where somebody's bugging the fuck out because they have mental disorders, which has happened by the way, um um fucking uh what's his name um Derek Shaver Daniel Shaver. Right, was having essentially a mental breakdown, and the cops came because they were told to be there, and then they murdered him. It doesn't matter how the cops got there. It doesn't matter. It, who's it doesn't None matter. Of that matters. No, it matters that they murdered him. Wow, that's that's an insane claim to make. You mean to tell me that if you call the cops to 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 come to de-escalate a situation that something's happening, and then the cops kill somebody and not de-escalate the situation that they did the right thing because they were called to be there. Nobody called the cops to murder George Floyd. <laughs> Nobody called the cops to murder um, Eric Brown, right? Like, I, I don't even understand. I really I wish, I really wish for the sake of argument that you get put in that same situation as a cop. I hope to God you become a cop. Just out of the blue, I, I hope become you become a cop. a cop. I would never become a cop. I wish for you to become a cop. I would never become a cop. Why? And I would never, I would never. Because Aren't you the was, better of the people? Aren't you a good person? Why would you not absolutely. become a cop then to change because the system? A, because if I was a good cop, I would be a good cop, and good cops don't. So then become a cop. No, good cops don't make it in the police. How do you? Well, because no good cops apply, like you oh. just did. So, for example, uh if that's what you genuinely believe, why don't you become a cop and encourage all the people that think like you to become cops and replace the ones that are there? Because it's not going to happen. Why? Because I'm not. Uh, so you want me to go through this process of becoming a yes. police officer? Yes. Right. To then be a good cop, yep. to be ostracized by the police. No, to become the replacement for no, all the bad ones. No, I'm going to be ostracized by the bad ones. Oh, that's what's going to happen. That's like, what hap this is what happens to good cops. This is what happens, like to, good what happens cops. to good Christians too. It's weird. It's the same simulation. Yeah, we get ostracized. No, actually, so contrary to popular belief, I actually believe that uh, faith and religion can be a positive thing. 
No, no, no we're not talking about that. faith and religion. We're talking about Christians. Okay, don't, don't, don't. It is religion. Too. I'm not. No, no I'm, I'm not, saying I'm, I'm, you're I'm, conflating an ideology with people. I am not talking mm -hmm. about the uh, the belief. I'm talking about the people. Christianity is a people belief. get ostracized. The belief doesn't get ostracized. The be people the do. Belief gets ostracized. It does. So the belief in police is what's getting ostracized, not the police. The system of police is getting ostracized. So then become a police and replace the, the, the system itself. No. But you're not willing to do that much work because it's too hard. No, because I don't want to. Oh, but you want to change the system. How exactly? I don't need to be a part of the system. But change. how do you change the system? What exactly are you looking for to change? And if you can't change it by you, you're expecting someone else to take your place with your mindset Vote. That's willing to do the work. Vote. To go in Get and legislators in. People who are part of the system, right? Vote locally. Um, protest. Uh, bring awareness to what's happening. Okay. Right? After like all that, doing. what exactly are you looking to change? What exactly? What do you mean? So, oh, Jesus Christ. Do you think, so tell me one issue in the history of ever that has been changed because people were quiet about it. Was Martin no, not Luther the, King? I'm, no, no, no. Was that's Martin not Luther my question. King a politician? That Martin is not the question. Bro, yeah, but you're avoiding my question. Politician. You're avoiding my avoiding question, the question, question like the plague. No, because you're... you're, you're I'm you're, asking you what you want seen, to change. What the hell seen, are you looking for what change? What, what change? change? What change? I want... Oh, what? in the case of Black Lives Matter, we want cops to not be able to murder people with impunity. How exactly? How? How are you going to do that? What do you mean, how? How? We're doing that. Like, literally, how? We're doing that. How? Oh, my God, bro. How are you going to stop a cop from killing somebody? I can't prevent anybody from doing anything ever. But you can allow people to be punished. I didn't say prevent people from killing people. I said stop them from killing people with impunity. That is and the you important think that, part. So, so because you have an impunity placed on it, you think that's going to stop it? Absolutely. Well, it'll, it'll prevent it more. Oh, wait, really? aren't you? Wait, really? wait. Are you pro-life or are you pro-choice? Pro, pro wow. Are you pro-life wow. or are you pro-choice? Are you pro life? What does that have to do with the question at hand? So, do you think that banning abortions will limit the amount of abortions that will happen? I, I've never, I've never, anymore? I've never, ever, ever told people I want to ban abortions. But do you think banning abortions will? It won't matter abortions? because people will still do it. Do you think it would lessen the amount of abortions? No. You don't think it will lessen the amount of no. abortions? Mm -hmm. You think that there will still be hundreds of thousands of abortions? Yeah, a year? because there'll always be somebody doing. So there will be hundreds of thousands of people having unsafe abortions and dying yes. per year. That is mm -hmm. bullshit. And you know oh, that's bullshit. Oh, no. And you're being bad faith right now. I'm being bad faith. Abs there's no way. How that many if a murders happen? Not oh, 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 is murder illegal? Yes. How many murders still happen in Chicago alone? Oh, I don't know. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head. Seven hundred and thirty-five last year. Okay. So do you think that if is murder, murder was illegal? illegal do you is think murder that if illegal? Yes, murder is illegal. Okay, does it still so, happen? Yes. Oh. This is my argument. At an exponential right? rate? No. Yes, over no. cops? No. Yes, at an False. exponential no. rate. Murder is actually going down, not up. Oh, okay. it, it is? Yeah. Wow. And But yes. you have empirical data for that, right? I bet. Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. I have empirical data for that, right? So, again, my argument is that if you put in laws that cops can't just kill people and just get away with it, then there will be less of that. It's not going to happen. You, you really rate. believe that? Absolutely. Because when you hold people accountable for their ac actions, people think about the consequences. It's kind of like Christianity, like not wanting to go to hell. You, you think that stops Christians me. from acting out? I think that at, no, I think that it makes more people Christian when they don't want to. No, it doesn't. It makes people more subservient, but it doesn't make people more Christian at all. I think it does. No. I think it makes, I think it draws more people to Christianity because they say, I've, I've literally heard this argument. I keep, I've heard people say that I believe in God because I, I would rather take the chance that if there was that's a hell, I don't want to go there. That's but not yes. Christianity. Though. That's what Christianity allows to happen. No, that's what people pick as their version of Christianity, but that's not Christianity. It's like right? my, it's, it's no different. And again, I'll go back to your, it's just like how I talked <clears> about BLM versus what you know about BLM. Because I have empirical data. Ah, yes. I have because of data. what you know, right? No, because I have empirical data. But you know it's not about that. what I know. It's about what, it's what you know. data says. So you don't know right? it? I do know it. Okay, then you, it's what you know. But it's not what it's not. I didn't say what you create. I didn't say what you create. I said what you know. Sure. It's don't you know it? Everything, everything Perfect. that I'm But you know it. But you know. know it. Stop being. You know it. You believe in BLM because you know what you know. Don't give me this bullshit about what the Be empirical, specific. you know it. Be specific. But you know what BLM espouses, do you not? Correct. You know empirical data, hence what you believe. I know the results that they've So you believe what you believe because you know it. Correct. Perfect. People and Christianity believe what they believe because they know it. No. People you who believe choose what you believe Christianity as an excuse you know don't. It. You think you know it. 
you have a subjective objective belief I'll tell you what you, you don't get to do you don't get to do you don't get to decide how i believe what i believe that's not your place show me imperial data that god exists you don't get to decide how i believe what i believe you don't believe it don't believe it it's that no. simple now, but you don't get to decide how and why i believe something that's not that your place to this point, you don't you don't have me. that rule so what proof can you show me? You don't have that rule. I don't have to prove anything to you because I don't need you to believe it. Exactly. The but same way make... I don't need to believe BLM at all. That's not the same thing. Why do I need to believe BLM? Because I don't believe in BLM. Why I do believe... I need to believe that Black believe... Lives Matter? I don't believe that Black Lives Matter. Why do I, I, I need believe... to believe that Black Lives Matter? You don't need to believe anything. Perfect. What I'm and saying I don't... is that. Right, exactly. But I'm, people I'm like you will look at me and say, I'm a hatred person, I'm no, a bigot, or no. I'm a racist. If I were white and I told you black lives don't I'm matter, racist. I'd be a racist to you. Absolutely. Perfect. Just, and that's your belief, but that's not true. If you don't believe that black lives matter, you would be racist. What, what, how did that make me racist? You don't believe the black? Aren't you black? I didn't say I believe that. I'm totally, if I said that, you would think I'm racist. If somebody said that they don't believe that black lives matter, yes, that would make you yeah. racist. H how? Because you believe that black lives don't but matter. But I'm black. I can't be racist. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people in general. But if I say it, am I racist? What do you mean? What am I if I say it? If you say that black lives don't matter? Yeah. I, what am I, I then know. at that point? Then you would be saying that your own life doesn't no, matter. But what am I? Sense. You're black. Yes, but what would I be by saying black lives don't matter? You're black. You would be saying that I, your own I, life I, doesn't I matter. I'm, gl I'm glad you can state the obvious. Can you be racist but... to yourself? Out to myself, what do you mean? Can you, can you I'm be saying black yourself? lives don't matter. So. Can I be racist to myself? I, that's for you to decide, I guess, since you did right. decide so, all the rights and wrongs. So I'm be, asking you, you though, what would you I be? be saying that black people and people like what would you I are be? not racist? What, what would, would I would be? mean? What would you be? What would I be? You call a white person a... racist, but you won't call me racist. Why? I would call you racist. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't hold the belief that nobody can be racist to like only white people. I don't have the belief that only white people. Oh, can so be it's racist. not. So you'd have a different definition of racism than the rest of the world. No, I have, I have the the definition. Oh, uh, you have the right definition of correct. racism. Yes, prejudice against uh, somebody's prejudice so it has, or has nothing to do with power. Huh? I don't believe that. No. Oh, you might want to check with BLM. I, I, I don't care. I don't share all of their beliefs. Right. I'm not indoctrinated by BLM. The way Christians are indoctrinated by Christianity. We're not indoctrinated by Christianity. We we you, follow. I, I get it. See, you don't actually have the ability to dissert to 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 distance yourself from whether or not I. Why would I distance myself from God? Absolutely, because you believe in God. Absolutely, I don't. Why like, would I, I distance worship. myself from God? These are not the same because I don't worship BLM. I don't. Believe why in... would I distance myself from God? You're not I answering my question. I'm at this point why I don't care. Right. So I don't worship BLM. I don't believe in. BLM. I believe the data and the results. What that if BLM... are you black? Yes. What kind of black? What do you mean? What kind of black? What kind of black? What what mix are you? I'm Puerto Rican and black. Puerto Rican is not a race. That's a nationality. What ra what mix are you? Hispanic. Yes. Hispanic and black. Yes. And what if a truly black person? You know they have those a out truly there. Truly black person. Yeah, yeah. Well, they call themselves that. I'm just saying sure. bit what they say. Tell you you're not black. What do you tell them? Tells me I'm not black. Yeah. I told them that they're wrong. What? Why are they wrong? But you're not, though. According you're to mixed. who? You're mixed. I, I don't give credence to that statement. But you're not black because you're okay. mixed. Okay. But why are you fighting for black people? What do you mean? Why you don't I... have a voice in this. You're not black. Yes, I do because I'm black. No, no. You're Hispanic and black, which makes you diluted. No, it makes you black. Completely diluted. No. Because a true black person that's really for the movement wouldn't be mixed. Mm, false. I'm pretty sure right now there are lots of BLM people thinking, man. You see, the thing is, I don't guy. have to. I don't have to engage baseless claims with evidence. If you exactly. make a baseless claim, I can repeat ah! it with a baseless claim. I am right? glad you said that because now you see, like I said, you keep using the same rhetoric that you are against Christians using. No, I said I don't have to make your a baseless, baseless claims. Claim. You have a baseless claim against Christians, and when we tell you it's baseless. Or we want empirical evidence. When you tell it we have empirical evidence, it's anecdotal. When you tell it's not anecdotal because it's personal, you see, that doesn't count. That's how you run around the circle. The same way you think Christians do it, it's the same way you do it. You no. have an answer for everything. An answer yep. for everything that you think you believe. Because I have data. It's not about whether or not I believe I have also data. have data. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Like what? The doctor's records. The doctor's records. Yeah. I would like to yeah. see those records. I've, well, you I, get I, to, but you're not, you know, first of all, you ain't a doctor, so you don't get to see those records. I can introduce you to the person that it personally happened to.
And if they oh, decide, this is an actual. Oh, I thought you meant like something you read online. No, or no, no. You, you mean to tell me the there person. was a real life? I know the person. To, okay. It's a friend of mine. Yes. Okay, gotcha. All right. Yes. Uh, Multiple friends that's of a mine. Coincidence. Yes. A coincidence. Okay. Oh, it's so, coincidence. Yes, I often find that people who have these beliefs, these absolute beliefs in things, always have a friend or an experience of people who uh, I've never heard anybody who's vaccinated and not against vaccines say that they knew somebody who's died from vaccine, but I always find that anti vaxxers I, I do. Their my mom aunt, or their aunt. grandmother listen, or somebody died from the listen. vaccine. My, hmm. my aunt did. It's yes. Very strange to me. So you're telling me my aunt didn't die from the vaccine? No, probably not. Wow. And you have empirical data to back that up? Do you? I do. You have an autopsy report? Yeah, I do. Okay. What? You don't believe that either? Was she allergic or something like that? No, no allergic, nothing. No allergies, perfectly nope. healthy. Perfectly, perfectly healthy, healthy died from the vaccine. Yep. I'm going to say bullshit on that. Oh. I'm going to say bullshit. Well, you can believe what you want to believe since you have empirical data to the contrary. I, I can don't. have empirical data. Mm -hmm. You don't show me nothing about your empirical data. But when I tell you I have empirical data, it's bullshit. That's not that's what empirical means. That's amazing. Means. That's that empirical is means. amazing. That's not what that's amazing. Means. If you had a doctor's record or an autopsy report, sure. that is incredible. Sure. I'm just saying that I don't believe you. Wow. No, bullshit is not believable, though, right? Because that's, yeah, that's. Yeah, I'm saying that I don't wow. believe you. Wow. Right? That's all. I don't. Wow. Because, because from what I've seen, the empirical data shows that the vaccine does not kill people. So she wow. had to have been allergic. You had to. She yeah, had to have had, had a to been. dangerous had allergic been. reaction to that for it to kill her. Because there's nothing mm. in the vaccine that's going to just kill people. I've no, seen the ingredients of the vaccine, right? The vaccines don't kill you unless, again, like is, is like chicken like negative. Please, should, Melody, can you if, tell him that she had an allergic reaction? Because he will only believe it if she had an allergic reaction. Just understand that anyone that's died from the vaccine, anybody watching this, if you have a person in your family that has died from the vaccine, it's because they were allergic and nothing else. Because that's empirical that? data that he has researched mm -hmm. and seen that you cannot die mm -hmm. from any vaccine unless mm -hmm. it's an allergic reaction. COVID vaccine, to be specific. Just want you to know that's what he believes. You could right. see everything else to the contrary, but mm -hmm. understand that it's a, an allergic reaction. How come I, I just I just don't seem to have people who come to me and say, hey, you know, I was vaccinated, I was supporting the vaccine, and then like my my aunt got it or and she died, and now I really need to speak about this. It's always people who are already anti-vax. That's not who true. Who then either. tell me, yes, it is every single That's person. That's not true either. And I'm pretty sure I've, I've interacted with more anti-vaxxers than you have. Okay. Oh, and oh every wow. Uh, person, that's empirical. Hold on. That's empirical. I said I'm pretty sure that I have. Then don't say a statement like that because you don't know. Okay, sure. Deal with so, the empirical since you love empirical data. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure. You are Which not is, pretty I'm, sure. I am pretty you sure. You think you think you have, but you don't know, and it can't be pretty sure. Because, because I, pretty because sure would be I on the actively, opposite side. I actively, you are an anti-vaxxer, right? So what I'm the hell not. does that mean? That means, means I interact which, with anti-vaxxers and vaxxers alike. Which you want to put I me in a bracket because I'm not means, vaxxed? Which no, I'm saying that you're an anti-vaxxer. That's if you want. What does that have to do with anything? I'm also a, a, I'm I'm not atheist. That don't mean I I ignore atheists. I'm I'm, I'm not saying that. Right. I'm saying that I've probably interacted with more of them because I actively seek out anti-vaxxers to talk. And you, and I don't. And you actively seek out anti-vaxxers to talk to? To what? I to, actively uh, seek out uh, vaxxed people to talk to. Right. You seek out vaxxed people to talk to just the way I, I not being an anti-vaxxer, seek out anti-vax people to yes, talk to. Yes, the exact same right. way because so I I'm have to do my sure research. I'm pretty sure that I have talked to more anti-vax people than you have. How can uh, how can you, as an, a vax person, I'm sure you are, because you probably triple and quadrupled for all I know, mm -hmm. talk to more anti-vaxxers than I do? Because I actively give me a give me a ballpark number of how many anti-vaxxers you've talked mm, to. Let's let's be specific about talking to people about these. Yeah, things, go ahead. Right? How many? A ballpark number? Yeah, I don't know, dozens. For me, mm -hmm. talk to at least two thousand. Two thousand, and, and you can confidently yeah. make that. Yes, I can confident, okay. confidently make because that. Because your statement. circle is probably anti-vaxxers. Yes. And has every single one of those people had somebody die from the vaccine? About a fourth of them have. A fourth of them. Okay. Yeah. So a fourth would be twenty-five percent of the anti-vaxxers you've yes. interacted with. Right? Yes. For me, that'd be five hundred people, by the way. I would say about eighty-five percent of the anti-vaxxers I've interacted with have had somebody die. Because I'm not also interacting with anti-vaxxers who I share. But we're not talking right? about anti-vaxxers. We're I can talking say, about people that took the vaccine. And I can say that 100% of the people, right? Um, Yes, of yes, of people who 
them or people who they know have taken the vaccine. Right. right? 85% of the anti-vaxxers I've talked to have either known somebody close to them who have died, right? Um, and 100% of the people who I know who have been vaccinated have had no such claim, 100%. So there's 85% to the contrary. How many people are those? What do you mean? How many people have you spoken to that are vax? Hundreds. How many? I don't I, I don't know the exact... You're asking me for an arbitrary number that I can't give you. The you same way you me. asked me for an exact number. There's no Hundreds. Difference. I didn't get... No, you asked me for an exact number. I said dozens. No, you asked you said me how many did I thousand. talk to. You asked no. me how many unvaxxed people I've talked to. Right. So Okay. So I said that I'm pretty sure I've talked to more than you. And right? I, and and I showed you that I, I talked to, talk to more. Right. So 25% of the people who you've talked to or anti-vaxxers have supposedly had somebody who have died from the vaccine. Right. And about 85 or 90% of the people who I've talked to who are anti-vaxxers have said that they've had somebody die from the vaccine. But 100% of the people who I know who have been vaccinated or know people who have been vaccinated, which is a lot, usually you know more people than you are or your friends don't want people, no adverse effects whatsoever. Okay, so none of us are seeing this? How many Christians have you talked to that gave you an adverse reaction to God? I, I don't even say oh, this is relevant. How much know, I'll tell you why. I will tell you why. Because if you believe in it, you're not going to find the adverse reaction. You're not going to talk about them. People aren't going to talk about the bad side of God because they believe in God. They want you to believe like they do. Are you talking about like Christians who... You know, are, the whole confirmation bias thing. I've seen, I've seen plenty of I've seen plenty of Christians who are questioning their faith, who, who see the No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. I'm so saying there will be plenty of Christians Adverse? who will not deny God, right? Sure. Like, they will, you will give them all the examples of him killing. Take that's me, for instance, faith. right? No, take me, for instance. He'll, he did all this, and I say, and... Okay. There are tons of Christians that do that, right? You, you, sure. you put it past it, vax people to do the same thing? This has nothing to do with science. Do you put it past vax people to do the same? To say whether or not somebody's back to back, regardless of whatever happens. No. Oh, so because they're they're just so holy, they will tell you the holy? truth hundred percent of the time. Holy? No, I think that people who I interact with tend to look at things that are true, things that are observable, things that so can they'll be, be honest proven. with you, is what you're saying. You believe them to be honest with you hundred percent of the time. Absolutely. Wow. That's a great crowd to be a part of, especially over in the yeah. hundreds. That's I amazing. Think so. I think so. But Christians are not, though, because we live in bad faith and no, no, I, unempirical I think, data. No, I think that you truly believe what you believe. I just think that you And I truly believe that vaxxers vaccine. believe what they believe, and even though it's false. They no, believe I don't it. believe anything. It's not about belief. It's not about faith. I don't have I can faith tell you that, in the vaccine. I can tell you right now that you have denied. I don't have faith in science. I am telling you right now. You told me that it would be bullshit to tell you that my aunt died from the vaccine because it's side effects. I think, I think that would be bullshit, yes. But you're not a doctor. No, I'm not. I don't need to be. Oh. Oh, you don't need to. Oh, yes, because of all evidence that I've seen, all the science. Did you the see my aunt's evidence? Did you observable... see my aunt's evidence? No, of course not. Okay, right? so you didn't um, observe that. Of then you not. can't make a judgment on it, can you? I'm not making. Well, well I can make a guess, right? I'm but not you made saying a, you made a bullshit guess. I is said what I'm I telling think. You. I think it's bullshit. That's why I said. You said I, I call bullshit. bullshit. Yes, I'm going to call out people when I think that's they're not lying. Thing. Absolutely, that's very, that's very definite. I'm going to call out people when I think they're lying. I'm not just going to let you. So you think I'm lying? Yes. That's your think first you're lying go or you're that is your first go-to, is that yes, I'm lying. Yes, because I've observed, I think you're lying or misinformed because I've observed you being so in the past. When have I lied? BLM, Derek Chauvin, he was murdered. You don't believe that he was murdered? Despite, that's not despite a lie. The fact that that's, you that's watched him be, you observed the man That is not a murdered. lie. Yes, that is not no, a lie. I, that's said a... You're, I said you're either lying or misinformed. How am right? I misinformed? Okay, I'll tell you how you're misinformed. You observed a man get murdered on camera. The man was convicted of murder, but you still don't believe he was murdered. Right. Despite all that's evidence a belief. To the that's contrary. not misinformed. That I is, know exactly all the details of the case. I still don't believe it. That is false. You are denying the facts of reality. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I believe he got arrested. I believe he went to jail. I believe that he got arrested for the murder of George Floyd. I don't believe from what I saw that he murdered George Floyd. I have the right to believe that. That is not lying or misinformation because I tell everybody the bits of information. I can show you the film. If at the end of the film, you believe he murdered George Floyd, you believe he murdered George Floyd. It was I don't murder. have to believe he murdered it was George Floyd. was objectively murder. Of course you don't have to believe it because you have Perfect. Then it's not lying or misinformation. It's my belief system. You believe it to be true. Yes. Despite the evidence that it's Beside not. the evidence you think is murder. So if I say the sky is yellow, is the sky yellow because I believe it to be so? It depends on what you're looking at. False. Was the, the sky, sky ever yellow? Was no. the sky ever yellow at no. any point in time? No. So how are you going to make that equivalency? You can't. But if I believe it is, then I believe it is, and it must be true. No, because there's a big, massive difference between that and watching somebody put their knee in the neck and watching attributing all of somebody. that to murder. Absolutely. 
I don't know how you can see that and cannot be murder. I don't understand this. I don't understand how anybody could watch that. Oh, no, I do understand because people have their own confirmation bias. I know for a fact that if you took off their no different than your uniform, view of God, okay? If you it's took no off their response your copy uniform and it wasn't George Floyd who was a criminal, it is um, no different than your view situation. of God. It is no different than your, than your view of God. very different. How? It's very different. You have because your confirmation bias that God doesn't exist. No, I don't. I don't have a lack of evidence that God exists. There's no, you had difference. evidence. You didn't like the evidence. No, I never had evidence. Because you wanted that God to do what exists. you wanted to do. I never had evidence that God exists. You want exists. to live the life you want God to live. Has never, you don't have God to follow never, the kinds of rules. God has never shown me what You don't rules? want the rules. You don't want There's the rules. rules? You what said rules? so. You said so. You can't have sex before marriage. Remember you said all that? I did not follow God because you I said you don't want to You said you don't want to live for a God that has those kinds of rules to put down. That's not the only reason why. But I, you said I, so. No, I said that I think restricting myself because of the rules of God, a God who has never then you don't want to follow God because of that. Is, no, I don't want to follow God because he's never proven himself to me. God has never proven that he exists. I can believe that a hundred percent that you never witnessed God. Absolutely. And I, I don't think anybody has. Based I don't think on anybody how I know in the world what I know has now, ever witnessed God. You, I can a hundred percent believe that you've never encountered God. I don't God. think anybody's encountered God ever. Okay. Because Mr. Empirical Data, you have empirical data to back that up? What do you mean? Do you have empirical I'm not data making to a back negative, up the fact I'm not making that a negative people claim. have never encountered God? I'm saying that I believe. Okay. Do you have empirical data to prove that people have encountered God? <clears throat> there is no empirical data to show that people have encountered God. Oh. It's all anecdotal. There's no empirical data to prove God. And if there was, you'd be able to show me. This I, I debate can. would be over. You can't I can, because though. it doesn't exist. Why doesn't it exist? Show it to me. The mere fact that you are sitting there <clears throat> is, a, is, is proof. But you don't want that proof. Because the proof that if you would believe it, you would have to change a whole lot of things. No, me existing yeah. is not proving the existence. You still haven't proved to me where morality came from. You just said it was. It just came. It just it happened comes to from be. Reciprocity. You still haven't told me how everything developed Instinct. from a single cell organism and managed to split into these multiple of of animal and There's human. And yeah. human was the only one that managed to get higher consciousness. You have yet to tell me how any of that took place with two things banging together. You can't prove that to me. You just take Science it on can. faith. You take it on. They can't do that at all. They have never proven why and how it happened. Absolutely. Not once. Because everything they base it on is randomized. <clears throat> Evolution cannot happen without randomized mutation. That's what they say. Okay. What's wrong with that? Because you cannot randomize consciousness. Yes, you can. No. Yes. Okay. Then then create it. Go ahead. I, I want you to randomize consciousness for me right now. How? Go ahead. How, how come? How come? How come man has not been able to do it? Evolution Again. Has not been able to do what? Randomize consciousness. You mean create consciousness? Yeah. How? Because remember, in our last discussion on TikTok, you said once <clears> it's <throat> happened, then we can go forward, right? It's happened. Why can't you move forward and tell me why consciousness is? Women give birth to other people. That but person no, is no, a no, random set of do DNA. That. You don't do that. I don't need to. I'm a man. But you don't but do I that. But Humans that. don't do that. Yes, you we can't do. Replicate we do it every day. You cannot replicate Yes, we do. It. Women How? create people all the you time. You don't do that. Of which their DNA structure will be random. Yes, women and men. Their DNA structure my is DNA, not random. Their DNA the structure DNA. is not random. Yes, it is. It's your How DNA it and the woman's DNA. No, that's not random. It's, you yes. obviously don't your know what, DNA, what random is. Hold on. So your DNA and the woman's DNA makes a completely new No, 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 no. That's not random. That is not random. That's not random. Which makes a new person Hold which is on. random. Hold on. It's not random. And I'll tell you why. Why does randomness even matter? Because it's part of your belief system of it not being a God and it has to occur somehow, somehow, over time, consistently, but still random. Randomness. It can't be as random. In, well, chaos, it can't like be things random. happening. Why can't it be random? It cannot be random. Why? Because if you're going to have the way genes work and the way DNA works, sure. when it lines up, there are built-in codes into each mm -hmm. DNA strand. Yep. If it randomizes... What mm -hmm. you're telling me happens is that the DNA code itself is restructured. You can't have a restructured DNA code. You have a combination of you the can. mother's and father's DNA. You and that is set. For random mutations to happen, those two have to somehow blend and create something completely antithetical to the first two. One is either stronger or weaker than the other. They don't transform, which is what random mutations happen, and that's when you get anomalies. Evolution didn't do that. And when like it albinos? did, when it did, when it did, it got rid of it. You mean like albinos or something? Not albinos. We're talking about randomly awkward. It, it, it literally will kick it out. If, if it, 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 it kicks it out. If, if the DNA strands come together and it decides to just change one thing random mutation wise, it doesn't come together. Wait a minute. How, how are you? Where are you making this claim that evolution how am I, is it's, it's, random? No, that evolution is random. Where are you getting this from? 
What do you mean? Where am I getting it? Science. Well, you well, you'd like no, you like science. No, this is science. No, it's not. This is a myth. Mutations are essential to evolution. Yes, mutations are not random. It, it is very random. No, they're not. Very random. No. I'm literally looking nope. at this. Yes, I'm looking at this right now. It's literally saying that this is a myth. Evolution is random. This is not true. Oh my gosh! Are, are you gonna deny the science? Like I'm usual? looking at the science right now. Right, it says this. Right, so the anomaly would be removed if it created an, a, a variance. Right. No, right here. Evolution is not a random process. The genetic vari the, the genetic variation on which natural selection acts may occur randomly. But natural selection itself is not random at all. It, the it, survival and reproductive success of an individual is directly related to the ways it's inherited did, traits uh, okay, function okay, in the I'm context of theory. its local I will environment. Test that I will test that theory for you. How did a dog <clears throat> and a human come from the same location? What do you mean? It all came from one, right? No. The dog no? Are you making the claim that dogs evolved into humans? I'm asking. No, I'm asking how did all these branch out from one. Oh, so again, like it says here, right? Um, what is the exact sentence, right? So With no traces of any at the end of it. Right. So the the the, the, the genetic variation mm -hmm. on which natural selection acts may occur randomly, right? Um, but natural selection itself is not random at all. The survival and reproductive success of an individual is directly related to the ways its inherited traits function and the contents of its local environment right so again we didn't that's come adaptation from, that's right. not mutation. so again so when they say in the beginning that like we came from like single-celled organisms mm -hmm. they didn't mean that there was one single <laughs> oh, organism oh, okay. there were multiple <laughs> single-celled organisms <laughs> who's making the claim that we came from a single one single-celled organism oh my god bro you might want to you might want to brush up on what your people actually say the whole thing started from i think you should brush up on you you that. might you might want to go back and check that you might want to. You might want to. <clears throat> because what you're trying to tell me is that when it exploded, it exploded. And everything that could possibly come came from multiple. You don't know how many. It just happened to blow up into multiple. And they all, they all, this, these, all these single cells branched out into what we call animals, people, bugs, right? That, that just happened. Plants, all of it, right? And you're expecting me to believe that on occasion, one of them bloomed and split into two different animal groups like birds and reptiles, right? That that's, is that's how, how it happened. Os, that's how osmosis happens. Wow. I mean, osmosis? Split. Yeah. I don't think that's osmosis, buddy. I'm just letting you know. That's not what osmosis is, but okay. Again, the science that you think you know, I, I don't think you know. I, I, I don't think you know what osmosis really is. Sorry. I used the wrong word. No, I, I think you used the right word because that's the word you know. Mitosis. That's the one. Mitosis. That's what I meant to say. So we agree. Mitosis, right? The splitting of cells. Right? That's what I mean. So am I still incorrect or not? Yeah, no, totally. Right. Mitosis. So. No, you're totally wrong. I, again, but, uh, you know, but ain't nobody going to convince you because you want to hold on to that thing for dear life. I mean. Yeah, like I said, no different than a Christian. You're just a different type of Christian now. You're just a Christian in science. You're a science Christian. No, I'm not a yeah. Scientologist. You're a social Scien Christian. Scientology is, is religion. No, I didn't say Scientology. I said right. you're a science Christian. I'm not. Not even close. I look, oh, I'm look. i somebody who looks at data that, science. That, science. that can be proven and observable. That's science. And then I make decisions based on that. That's science. That's not religion. Religion is based on faith. I didn't say religion. I said you're a science Christian. Christianity is based on faith. There's no... no. Yes, because it is. You're, ta you're taking the Big Bang on faith. Why? Because I wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, nobody was there. Exactly. Right? So you're but we have observ faith. But we have observ We have observable. Recreate evidence. the Big Bang for me. We have physics, right? We have physics. Recreate the Big Bang for me. Why are you asking me to recreate the Big Bang for you? Because you believe in it. It doesn't can, matter. I'm God not a, recreates his his life giving force all the time. I'm waiting for you to see. Because we, like I said, children. So, I mean. I want to see you recreate the stuff that you say came out of nothing. You're making ridiculous claims. Did it come out of nothing, by the way? That was another question. Did, did, come out of did all of this happen out of nothing? What do you mean? You know, the Big Bang. Did it come out of nothing? Did it come out of nothing? No, obviously there was something. So there. what was there before? Who knows? What was there before God? God was there. You see, the difference How? is I don't claim, I don't claim that there was nothing. Yes, I claim that God was and always will be. How? You believe the same thing. How? You just call it, you just call it How? matter. Explain it, though. I don't need to explain God the explain same way you it. cannot explain. Recreate God. 
Hold on. You asked to recreate the Big Bang. You, you no, 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 no. Because yeah. I don't need to recreate God because God was not created at all. You understand? You live on the same level of faith as I do. You just don't want to call it faith. You want no. to say that it's science. So prove to me where God was. Well, tell me where God was before. You tell me where things were before the Big Bang. You can't do this. You can't do it either. And you can't do it either. But I still believe what I believe. You don't want to call it faith. You work on faith. No, I work on data. You're working on faith because no. you can't tell me what was there before the Big Bang. Tell me scientifically how what God was there existed. before the Big Bang. Tell me scientifically what was there existed. because you can't scientifically tell me because what was there before the Big Bang. Because what we was have there evidence. The Big Bang? We have evidence. What was there? Was, what was there before God? I can ask you the What same was question. there? But you're not okay. You, but you said you have evidence. Obviously, you told me I have none. Perfect. You have evidence. What was there before the Big Bang? Nobody knows what was there before the Big Bang. But you know it happened. Scientists have an idea of how it happened. Yes. What was the idea? How did how did how, what what do they think happened? So based on evidence that we have now, for example, that the universe is expanding, um, uh, that the first atom was hydrogen, um, how there was heat and energy, and how that expanded into the universe that we have now. Primarily, when we look at how the universe is formulated out as a grid, we see that that grid is constantly expanding. For there to be expansion, there needs to be force um, that is propelling the universe in the same direction that it's been going in. For billions of years and if it's been going in the direction of billions of years because of a force it had to have come back uh what created the hydrogen direction. what created hydrogen i don't have an answer for you for that but you did, Again, I said you at did the very manage, beginning of this that i'm not a come scientist up, but they did right? come up they did manage to come up with e equals mc squared though right theory of relativity yes yeah so that managed to come about knowing that you don't know how it came about that's that's not faith that's physics that, but that's not faith because you don't know. This has no basis. It's just because man said so. No, literally, time was observable through how something like literally Einstein got this idea of E equals MC squared. Idea. By observing something moving fast and something moving slow. This right, but he didn't, he, that doesn't tell me how something came to be. I literally just told you how the theory of relativity came to be. No, no, by, no. By I'm talking about I'm talking about hydrogen. How did that come to be? I don't have the answer for you for that. I, I, again, I said at the beginning of the stream. But you know it came to be. Because I've read about it, yes. But, but you know it came to be. Because I've read about it. But that's not faith. I've re I can't give you the exact data and but information. It's faith. Of I'm what... saying that's not faith, no, though. No, it's not You're faith. It it's faith. science. I'm telling you that I can't say off the top oh. of my head how it happened. I don't remember how it happened. I'm telling you, you don't that know it's how how, how, how hydrogen happened. Off the top of my head, no. But it there's there's data that there's says how hydrogen how showed up. Yes. I did. I didn't know they they had they so they could tell you what what the original matter was. And how that original matter occurred? Matter and antimatter. It just so happened that matter was winning over antimatter. That's oh, kind of like God and the, the devil. But you oh, call it oh, matter and antimatter is a science. Of, oh, right. Yeah. Weird. I think of that. Weird. That's crazy. That's, that's right? crazy. Two forces fighting against each other, but one just happened one over the other. I, 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 I tell you, you want to call it science? Feel free. You want to call it natural idea of morality? Feel free. But the same way you think I can't prove God to you, the same way, it's, and the excuses that you think Christians make, all of you on the left and some on the right make the exact same excuses for the social issues we have, for the life you live, all of you. Because you gave me the exact same logic when I asked you about BLM. You gave me all of the talking points just on your side of why you believe what you believe, how you believe what you believe, how I'm making no sense and what I have can't contradict what you know. The exact same thing Christians say, but when a Christian does it, they have no empirical data for it. And when you give you empirical data, it's bullshit or it's subjective and it makes no sense. I'm amazed that that you can have that viewpoint about Christianity and be OK with it. But if Christians think the opposite and think about that way about you, we are the bullshit artists. Because Christians have no evidence. You can keep asking me about the Big Bang, which is something Oh, no, I'm not going to keep asking about the Big Bang because I but, know you have no answer or, for the Big Bang. No, because there's plenty of evidence of modern science that you don't want to ask me about because you know there's answers. No, no, go ahead. And, I, I, we have so talked about, about the modern science. So how, about you, modern me, how science. about you give me current observable? If we can go back to the origins, nobody knows the origins of anything, right? Mm -hmm. So nobody can make that argument. Well, what about now? Why did God stop performing miracles? No, no, right? he didn't he stop. Was... And like I told you, I would give you an example, oh, but you need to was... see science. Remember, sure. you told me, okay. you to... no, right. no, stop, no. stop, right there. I literally told you I have examples of a miracle. You told me, uh, no, like it's, an, it's an anomaly. Right. That so, was your answer. So it's you, an so anomaly. You or it's your, bullshit. So give me... Hmm, uh, how is that? How am I ever going to prove anything to you when what you call my evidence is BS? I'm not going to try and prove nothing to you because when I give you a miracle... Source. 
I can't what? trust you as a source. I can't trust you. It is you not as me a as a source. I literally have somebody that did that exact same thing that went through it. You don't want that. You are not okay. George Floyd, you are not George Floyd. You are not even Chauvin. You're not the source. I can't believe you. It's on video. Ah, I can literally show you, but you know what you told me? It's BS and it probably didn't happen. About no, I'm not talking about the cancer thing. I'm talking no, we're talking yes, we are talking about the cancer, and we're gonna talk about the cancer thing because it is a miracle. But you don't want to call it a miracle you because you show don't have me a that. miracle. If you could show me that. Okay, Thomas. Okay, Thomas. Okay, I can Thomas. Sh I can literally show you a video right now. And I can show you a doctor records of it being gone in a heartbeat. But you know what you don't want is that evidence. Because even well, if I do show I you, do want that even evidence. if I don't show you that evidence, you're that gonna, evidence. I can bet you money I know what you're going to tell me. What? Oh, that, that was there's an a scientific anomaly. explanation? Yeah, there's a scientific explanation. Oh, maybe. Yeah, there you go. Well, why would I show you? Because I would like to see it for myself to determine whether or not uh, how valid it is, and I, I wouldn't. I don't look. But you're at not data. a doctor. How would you know how valid it is? I mean, I wouldn't know. I, I would need a doctor to tell me and explain to me. And a, so if I wow. wow, wait. So what if I knew a doctor and I showed them the evidence you gave me, and then they said this is bullshit, or if they val, or if they validated, then they would have if to they validated look, it. That's science, though. That's what science this does, is, right? This is miracle of science. Is that right? what science does? Well, it, oh, yeah, that's what you'd call it a miracle of science. If the doctor told me, <laughs> I, I, I didn't make a claim. I didn't make a claim. Why are you laughing? I didn't make because a claim. Because it's a miracle of science. Science I has miracles, but not God. Why are you God. saying that's that I made amazing. a claim? I said if that's the doctor amazing. said that it's a miracle of science. That's what I said. It was literally, I was literally hey, talking about it. Said, if doctors if say it, then it must be true. What, what if happened? doctors say it, it must be true. Is that what you believe? No, not be you. Because they said it's a miracle of science. I said, if in the case that you showed me this and mm -hmm. the doctor told me that it wasn't true uh -huh. or, and it was it a miracle happen, or whether or not it did happen or didn't happen, it did happen, it was a miracle of science. And as soon as I said that, you just started laughing. I didn't even get the Because, yeah, because you said about. miracle of science, you can't have that. So, so what would be, be, be There is wait, no such thing as a miracle, miracle of science. science. Either science is empirical or it's not. It can't be a miracle. So you think that when people make phenomenal recoveries, that's not a miracle of science? Of course, because it's no, outside it's not the science. norm. I, I say it's, it's not science. It's not science. It's definitely not science. Yeah. No, I think that people's bodies can respond to things in particular ways. Oh. Not everybody's is the same, right? Mm. Not everybody works. But you the can't same. tell how because science can't prove it out. Well, yeah, you have people who get sick from the same thing, and like their bodies don't react the same. You got some people who get sick very, um, who get over it very quickly, and some people who don't get over it very quickly, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you have people, and this this can be expanded to a lot of things. You have people who get very very uh, chronic diseases, and you have people who beat it, and you have people who don't, right. and we call the ones who beat it. Miracles of miracle science. science, everybody. Right? But, but, but we're not using the term miracle the way Christians use the word miracle. We're Obviously using the word, not. Yeah, we're using it. <laughs> we're using it in, a, in, 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 in its deductive, dictative way, right? Not in the way that, like, oh, God did it, right? Just unexplainable. It just, it just happened. Unexplainable? Yeah, because it's a miracle of science. You can't really tell me how. It just, you know, it happened. Yeah. Uh, sometimes we say things as a miracle when we can't explain how things happen. Yeah, sure. It's just because we can't explain it uh, currently doesn't mean that we don't have an explanation, which is, I believe, why, you know, if I went back in time and showed somebody like my phone, they would think that it was a miracle because it couldn't explain it. But like, you know, as we learn more, we stop believing in miracles and we start believing time in travel would be a miracle. That would be the miracle. I know not time the, travel, not the showing the phone, but I definitely know, time travel would be a miracle. I know time travel doesn't exist in my lifetime because if it did, I would already come back in time and had to chat with myself at some point. So, yeah. But I don't know. Anyway, I don't but think. I did like the discussion. I don't, if, yeah. Like I said, the purpose of this wasn't to persuade yeah. anybody. I want yeah, to understand yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, I think um, I think I think we got a little heated, which I think every debate needs every now and then. But it needs it. Fine with. I'm fine um, with that. Yeah. Now, now, mind you, seven months ago, uh, I I would have found a way to metastasize and grow into something big enough to reach where he was and strangle the shit out of him. I probably would have gotten to that point seven months ago. But I'm not there anymore. I have I have evolved and uh, adapted. To my environment and uh, i have become more conscious about things so in in some ways i've borne out his case <clears throat> not really that's that was my anomaly case study for him um but but i did appreciate the conversation um nothing is ever going to sway me from my viewpoint about god ever at all at no point no time um and um <clears throat> if i don't if I don't speak about my God before man, I cannot expect him to espouse me. Did he just leave? He just just took off. Okay, not even a goodbye. I 
that was a little sad. I thought he would at least say bye. Um, but if, here's one thing you can see, okay? I want people to understand this clearly. When atheists tell you that there is no God, but they can't tell you why there is no God, He's back. Did you just leave for my, no reason? My, I accidentally... Um, this Negro just out. decided... My, my apologies. Screw you, bro. I'm out. My apologies. He just, he just my dipped. Apologies. Like, I was like, this brother didn't even say goodbye. Like, <laughs> damn. Scared. I like I thought I thought it was a cordial no, discussion. No, no. You're, you're good. You're good. My apologies. This, um, this man just dipped on me like, <laughs> dang. Very sorry. Very sorry about that. No, I'm but, sorry. Please please continue what you were no, saying. Um, no. Or feel free to cover anything I'm No, saying. no. Um, I was just telling people when you hear the, 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 the not atheist or someone who is not a Christian say that there is no God... It's because in their mind there really is no God. Um, you can't you can't persuade them otherwise because they have not encountered him. And when you can't encounter him, then the only other option is there is no God. And you have to resort to the science to bear out what you then can now believe, which is empirical. Eh? We see data. Um, and once you experience that data, nothing can then be attributed to any God because you can see without him, because I don't believe him, this is what I see. Um, but I do want to thank you for being um on the show today and uh do thank you for at least giving um the discussion and the debate i wish you had invited people to join i put the ad, the ad out you have three hundred thousand people we could have had a <laughs> really good audience i was kind of yeah hoping when i tagged you in it that you would at least put it on your page and say hey look i'm gonna school this non-blm black guy come watch you didn't, you didn't even do that i mean you couldn't even give it some hype i don't i even took time to make a nice fancy ad i mean you saw it right yes i did i i, I yes. took time man i took i took effort to make that thinking this brother is going to share it and he, he he didn't even so, didn't even do that uh, a lot of people say that i do this stuff like this for clout um which is i don't obviously because if i did i would have invited my entire following base to do it um i do very much enjoy these discussions um more so than anything else um i did uh, but in my defense though i did have a very busy weekend um and when i say busy i mean like there's a lot of other things happening in my life right now and um i did try to like focus up on the debate and like look look into things that i wanted to cover um but i just i was kind of getting a lot of stuff thrown at me um in the interim um and i really did want to like do more promotion and like put it on twitch and everything like that but i just didn't have the time there's just been too much happening so no problem it is what it is uh maybe next time we have a discussion if I yes i would love to have us i'll try to i'll, I'll try to do to. set up days before which is what i usually like to do but i really did not just i did not get the chance well like i said so, when you have time you let me know because i have nothing but time absolutely um so and do you uh do. you stream this from uh youtube and twitch right and it's uh facebook on two channels youtube okay. twitch on two channels rumble and instagram Okay. Uh, and do you, what time do you have a normal time to usually do these debates? Because I'd, I'd like to come no, in and see other people that you no, discuss, discuss um, with. My own channel, I don't normally do the debate thing. Um, unless I encounter somebody from like TikTok and they want to debate. And I okay. don't do TikTok debates because it's, like I said, it's nonsense. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, there are too many people that will show up and disagree with us both or send mm -hmm. a... Uh, the report in and then your live gets shut down right in the middle of a good discussion. And I right. hate that nonsense. But right. here... I control things. And so <laughs> they don't do that here. But okay. I set it up as needed. But I have a show that normally goes on at 5 o'clock every day. 5 o'clock Eastern. I mean, 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 Eastern. Okay. So, right. and that's on a, a channel called Too Strong. Too Strong. And, um, yeah. And so we do we do more of a, a different platform over there. But for me, I do a lot of philosophical discussions, topics, Um I, do, I don't normally tackle a lot of the uh, political things anymore. I'm, 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 I've gone a lot more heady with my topics, and which is why someone like you is a, a good thing because I've been having a hard time finding people that will be able to um, challenge me intellectually. Okay. And you notice, about, you notice about TikTok that TikTok is... Uh, Full of idiots not for the brightest <laughs> <laughs> of folks no offense to some of my friends i'm just talking about we know that tiktok is laden with a lot of slow folk uh you have to admit i don't care if you're a big crit you have to admit tiktok is laden with a lot of non-hamster wheel having hamsters so yes. um so that's what i <laughs> uh, that's the way i can easiest way i can put it you just don't you have the hamster no 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 wheel it just sits there and eats. That's all it does. Yeah. So thank you. 
thank you for being here. Um, you can dip. I have a couple of things I want to go over with my my project Absolutely. about tonight's show. And uh, but I really do appreciate you being here today. Uh, thank thanks you. for having me on. I appreciate the the discuss uh, the discussion. Um, again, the the whole heated stuff doesn't really bother no, me. No, it's much. like I said, that's going to happen. That's debate. Um, that's but matter. I do appreciate the the, the cordial um, discussion that we had. Uh, again, nobody's here to change each other's minds. No. I guess we're just here to discuss. At uh, least not at, at the moment. I mean, not I may moment. go back. I may go back no. and think about stuff and be like, yeah. And you might go back and think, nah. But you know, at least it'll be. It might be latent. You never know. You never know right. what might be. Right. What might have been planted. So. But yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, and maybe we'll have another discussion. In yeah, I would like to have a part two for sure. Or three now. Every part three. Yeah. Okay. Take care. All right. Later. Thank you. So, anyway, guys. Um, it was good for me. It was a good discussion. Um, but like I said, the same re answers that they give you for telling you that you can't believe in God is the same things he gave when I asked him about BLM, correct? Um, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't have the evidence I have, or if you did have the evidence I have, you didn't read it right, or you didn't do enough research, or um, it's all your belief, you, you have, it's confirmation bias and blah, blah. Which is why you can't base your belief in God <clears throat> on how other people perceive your walk. You can't do it. Because if you do that, you're going to be second guessing that thing all day long. You ain't going to have a leg to stand on. You ain't going to want to talk to God because you are you're listening to people tell you what you already know. You know that, 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 that verse that said, don't doubt in the light what God, don't doubt in the dark what God has told you in the light. Don't doubt in the dark what God told you. Not. You know God. If you know him, you don't need to listen to somebody tell you that you don't know him or that what you know ain't making sense or what that you know don't line up with this fact here and this fact here. I know for a fact that I have witnessed miracles. I know for a fact that I have witnessed demons. I know for a fact that I've heard him audibly talk to me. I know this. I don't need someone else to verify it for me. You don't need people to verify God for you. God verifies God. He's not a, a personage that is waiting to be proven out by people for him to be true. God is and everyone else a liar. Let God be true and everyone else a liar. If you don't believe that, I don't know how you can be a genuine Christian. If you don't believe that the man tells you, how are you, how are you ever going to actually follow the man? You can't. You can't do it. You cannot say you're following God, and then when he tells you something, did you really? You're, you're being Adam again. Did you really say that? You know, he's Thomas. Is what he really is. I need to see. Give me the hands. Let me let me see. He believes. I have a suspicion that Blackbird has a sor a source of. There is something twanging in the back of his head that something ain't right. Um. But it was a great discussion. But I will not be shaken in my belief system just because of the disbelief of a few. And that Amy gal, because I'm preaching down to people, I won't miss you. There's nothing about your support that was genuine to begin with. So I, I won't miss anything that you had to offer. Not your input, not your thought process, not your donations, nothing. What the truth has a tendency to do is weed out all of the... No, it just has a tendency to weed it all out. All of the chaff. That's the good one. The chaff. I'm not here to convince anybody of my faith. I'm here to convince people that God exists, but only because you need to. But if you don't, that's on your problem. That's not mine. I don't have to answer to God. You do. I don't have to answer to God for you. I have to answer to God for me. I have to live my life for God and my answers of to him are about my life. 
It was a great discussion. I really did because here's the thing. Discussions like this, it helps solidify for me that I know what I know. The instant I can run into a situation like this and start to second guess, that's when I know something's off. And it's either because I've encountered something that I have not fully thought through. Or it'll show me a weak spot. I encourage all of you to really, 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 really pin down your faith. Like take a journey into, into some sort of a opposite viewpoint and, and test what you believe against that opposite viewpoint. Um, work out your faith. Work it to failure, like I was telling him. You know, work out to, to failure. When you get to that point where you can't defend what you think you should defend anymore, see why. It's the only way you're going to really know your faith, really, is by walking it out, pushing it, testing other people, making sure what you believe you genuinely believe, because if at the end of the day you get tested about it and you don't have an answer, it tells me you weren't really living it out. You were content to just sit there and get it fed to you. You can't have it just fed to you. You need to have it constantly going through you. Always be ready to give an answer. That's what it means. That's exactly what it means. Always be ready to give that answer. If you can't give the answer, I don't know what, what the point is of following God if you can't say why you'd, if you'd follow him. Even if the answer is because. He is who he says he is, and I believe who he is. That's the answer to your faith. That's the answer. No one else has to believe it. No one else has to accept it. You do. Because it's a personal relationship. It's not for other people to, to, to break down and to decipher and then somehow flip it on you and say you're not, you know, that it'll all get tallied up in the end anyway. But be ready to give an answer for your faith. Because just like everything else, if it's true, it'll stand. If it's false, it'll fall. Just know that. If it's true, it'll stand. And if it's false, it'll fall. It can't help but fall. That's how he, that's how he designed it. I want to thank you guys for being on, for staying as long as you did. All 25 of you, 35 at one point, 40 at one point even. I do want to thank you guys for being here. It was a very good discussion, very cordial. One or two heated spots, but what debate isn't? If it didn't get heated, it wouldn't be a debate. I will not deny God. Not going to happen. People can hope it, wish it. Keep wishing. If anything, what this discussion did for me is it really, it really verified for me that my, my, my faith that I have is grounded. I mean, I didn't even feel once shaken off of it. I didn't. I didn't feel shaken at all. And that's, that's, a, that's verification for me. So, Wisdom calls to you from the street. Please, 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 please. Find wisdom. Oh,